And welcome to the 65th the Tour de Swiss cycle race, an all-category event just before the Tour de France. And before we go to the action, let's remind ourselves of last year, the American Fred Rodriguez taking out the points prize and the stage, while the race itself was won by Oscar Kamazind. In second place was Dario Frigo, and in third place his teammate Vladimir Belli. So, a Swiss man defending his title now, Paul, as we look at a race approximately 950 miles spread over 10 days with two time trials and plenty of mountains. Well, the Tour de Suisse is probably the fourth most important bike race in the world after the three major tours, the Tour de France, the Tour of Italy and the Tour of Spain. It is a very difficult race indeed. I think the excitement for everybody this year is the presence of Lance Armstrong and the uphill time trial to Cramontana. And this is not in Switzerland at all. This is the Europa Park, Roost, Germany. The first time the race has ever started outside of Switzerland. That has only taken 65 years to achieve. It's a 7.9 kilometers time trial based in the Europa Park, and it is very tortuous, a real challenge to the riders. And these races, only short, are crucial. The man with the best time, of course, will get the first leaders at Yellow Jersey. Everybody excited about the fact that Lance Armstrong has chosen this event to come to in preparation for the Tour de France. Previously, he's gone to races within France. Let's go to the action. Well, the early leader here, Phil, was Wouters, the Belgian rider who's been a great rider over the last few years. A very fast time by him coming up to open up the leaderboard. Nine minutes, 53 seconds. And that's a good marker, I think, because Wouters is a very good time trialist. Now, here's our first sighting of one of the US postal riders, the familiar style learner of George Hincapi. And he's the man who's going to set a target, he hopes. He's riding very well this season. He hopes to be alongside Lance Armstrong in the Tour de France. Well, it's a good ride there by George Hincapi. The time to beat there is the one of Mark Wouters, 9.53.90. And a very impressive charge to the line here by Hincapi in the second part of his season, Phil, after a very good classics campaign. And I think he's going to pip Wouters here. That is a very good start for Hincapi. Hincapi, 9.53.33, so he's just inside the time of Wouters. And that's a good start for US Postal. They'll be pleased with that. Impressive speed, too. 47 kilometres an hour, while the rest of Germany is really enjoying the Euro Park venue of this very important time trial. The next man out for US Postal, Phil, will be Tyler Hamilton. And that, I think, will be an indicator as the sort of time that Lance Armstrong is going to come up with. Yes, well, Armstrong always likes Tyler to give him his best in the time trials. He seems to take courage from the fact that what Tyler does, he can go that little bit quicker. So as we watch the fun and games here in the Roost in Germany, remember, the start of the Tour of Switzerland. This is the Europa Park, fun and games for everybody. Let's get back out on the course. Here they are, and this indeed now is Tyler Hamilton, a very good time trialist. He will expect to beat the time of George Hincapi, as indeed George will expect him to beat it. It always amazes me, the, the style here of Hamilton. You see how he rock and rolls the top half of his body, but you know it is a very good time he's putting in right now. 9.35, he's going to go well inside that of Hincapi. He's all over the machine right now, Phil, but this is fast. Oh, the big legs there of Tyler Hamilton. Looks like his form is good. This is going to be a promising time. It's going to be best time hits the line now 949.49 for Tyler just over three seconds quicker than George Hincapi what a start for US Postal though at the moment right there on top of the leaderboard together now as we move out onto the course this is the Olympic time trial champion boy the US Postal have got the big guns out today Vyatislav Yekimov now this man is very special he's been a world record holder at many disciplines on the track but I think it culminated when he got the Olympic gold medal in the individual time trial in Sydney last year a completely different style as we look at this man here taking the corners beautifully a great line around those corners but he's a smooth peddler and this man can ride in excess of 50 kilometers an hour his big moment came, of course, uh, last year in Sydney in the Olympic Games when he became one of those rare cyclists to have a gold medal on the road as well as on the track. 11 world records in the past under the belt of Vyatislav Yekimov. As a game, we take a quick spin round this very complicated park here in Roost and it's provided us with a very complicated time trial with lots of turns to disturb the rhythm of the rider. Ekimov, though, looking so familiar in that low-profile position, he's now signed a life contract with the US Postal Service team to see out his brilliant days as a bike rider and wait for this time. 
Well, it's a good time too. Outside nine and a half minutes for the moment. What's important is when the clock stops on the finishing line. He doesn't look to be perturbed at all, Phil, but he's going to go very close to the time of Hamilton. But I think he might just slip outside. Ziel means finish, and that's where he is now. He's not going to be as fast as Tyler, but how close is that? Eight hundredths of a second slower than Tyler Hamilton, uh, but uh, Vyacheslav Yekimov is right in there in second slot. A few deep breaths now for Alex Zula, showing us his new colours of Team Coast, a team which we have to say has been something of a disappointment so far this season. A big race this for Zula, I think, as we look down now, further down at Cerves Canavan, the man that treated us so well uh, to a brilliant victory in Paris-Roubaix. Well, Canavan, not one of the big favourites for this prologue here, but he's riding on a high fill after that win in Paris-Roubaix. You can see the bands there indicating he's a former champion of Holland, but this is a very good ride as well. He's going to push them quite close. Cerveis Canavan, his big moment coming in April this year. And amongst the many beat was George Hincapi. Now, is he going to get the better of Hincapi this time around in the time trial? Well, I think he is. Yes, he is. 9.51.88 for Cerveis Canavan. The good form continues. Big question mark now, Laurent Jalabert, the former world number one back from serious injury, that domestic injury he had at the start of the season when he fell down a ladder and sat on his back, and that really was painful. He's fighting back for a place in the Tour de France. Has he got the form? He was, don't forget, a former champion of the time trial of the world. Excellent time trial, Jalabert. He wants to show that he's got form for the Tour de France. His team, CSC World Online, have been selected for the Tour. Very nicely around that corner there as we go down to see Alex Zula, who in the past has been an excellent time trialer so over these very short prologue time trials, going very fast as well. Smarting a bit, I think, Phil, from the non-selection at the Tour de France. This German team, Team Coast, bought an awful lot of expensive riders during the winter months. And at last, we see Lance Armstrong in the gate. The countdown for the big man, Lance Armstrong, launches himself, knowing exactly what his teammates have done, knowing that if the form is there, he can beat them all. He's aiming for the top now, as we're back out on course here. Alex Zuller, by the way, his time checks are not great. He's seconds off the pace, uh, being set at the moment by Tyler Hamilton. We're looking here at the big legs now of Laurent Jalabert. The time checks are good for him. Jalabert looking very good, very smooth here. He has been a former world time trial champion. You can see how narrow the roads are around here, and these corners are where a lot of riders are losing serious time. You can lose three or four seconds if you don't negotiate these corners properly, and over a long time trial like this, it's very important. Here's Zula now approaching the finishing line, and pain written all over his face. He's well outside the mark. Well, a past prologue winner of the Tour de France, Zula is giving everything here. He wants a good start to what is 10 days of tough bike riding. It's not going to be... A not a good start, look at that, 12th at the moment for Zuller, and nearly eight, nearly eight seconds slower than Hamilton, who is still the best man on the leaderboard. That's not a good ride. Lance Armstrong won't know about that yet, but just look at the speed of this man as he comes up the barriers. Amazing thing over the last couple of years, and since that illness, Phil, he's completely changed his pedalling action. Very high cadence, over 100 RPM at the moment. Seems to use a very small gear, but Armstrong now pushes it over 50 kilometres an hour. I remember a couple of years ago, I think it was 1996, when we saw him win a very fast time trial over 32 miles an hour in the Tour du Pont. He's four kilometres from the finish right now and Jalabert doesn't look too fast, but he's got a lot of power in those thighs. Well, his times are telling us out on the checks he is very, very close indeed to the times of Hamilton and Ekimov. It is going to be tenths of a second split if he continues at this sort of pace. As he comes in out of the country now on what has been an excellent course, the riders who are finishing like this course. They said it's been a very good start, but everybody always speaks highly about the organisation of the Tour of Switzerland. It is one of those great events. Now, looking down at Laurent Jalabert as he heads back into the park at 300 metres to go, this is going to be touch and go. Hamilton is still on top of the leaderboard, but, Paul, it is going to be very close. Well, he's accelerating all the way to the line. He must know how close he's going to be right now. That's the time to beat, 9.49. Jalabert doesn't seem to be breathing too heavily. He's pushing it right to the line. This will go down almost to the final few seconds. Well, there's the time of Hamilton and the time for Laurent Jalabert. He's done it. 0.13 of a second to the best. Jalabert will be delighted with that. His form is coming in time for the Tour de France. His team, remember, getting in on a wild card. And I bet that was because Jalabert was on the team. Here now is the approach of Lance Armstrong. And he's going to have to try and beat the time of Jalabert, I can tell you. It might be just a formality for Armstrong because the time checks are saying he's two or three seconds ahead of Jalabert. As back to the starthouse now goes Bjatzeberg. 
Pierre Zerberg, a for, former very good rider in the Tour of Switzerland, but Armstrong is posting incredible times out on the course, Phil. He's come here to the Tour of Switzerland to test himself in the time trial, but more specifically the uphill time trial to Cramontana. But he may well end up with a win on the day for the first day here in the prologue because he's absolutely storming. Look at the time gap. Well, what a start this is going to be for Lance Armstrong. It reminds me of last year's Tour de France, but he was beaten there in the first time trial by David Miller, the British rider. He's not here, of course. But now Armstrong coming up to the line with the best time. 9.42.22, more than five seconds better than Laurent Jalabert. There's nobody going to get to that sort of time. So Lance Armstrong is going to be the first yellow jersey. Now we're looking here at number one, Oscar Kamazin of the Lamprey Daking team. Last year's winner and closing down the time trial. Well, I can't see him matching that time. That's impossible. I don't think anyone is going to get the better of Lance Armstrong today. This man is absolutely remarkable, Phil, as we look here at Bert Zaberg coming up to the line. Armstrong has picked his goals at the start of this season, second in the Amstel Gold Race, second in the Classic des Alpes, and this is the next milestone, and he's come up with the goods right on time. Well, Zaberg comes to the line, his time is good, but it's not going to beat Armstrong. Fifth place at seven seconds now for Biet Zaberg. Very good ride for the Rabobank rider. I said earlier, that team is having a marvellous season. At 300 metres to, to go now for Oscar Kamazin, the last man on course. His times are indicating not good, and that's why he's already outside the time of Lance Armstrong. Kamazin, not off to a great start, but I don't think he expected to do a great ride in the prologue. He's not that sort of rider. As Kamazin comes to the finishing line here now, it's Lance Armstrong who has got his first win of the 2001 season. What a way to begin his first ever Tour de Suisse. Well, he's also going to end up with a very important yellow jersey on his shoulders. I'm not sure that he'll want to keep it for too long because Lance is thinking about a race coming up in about 15 days' time, and that's the Tour de France. Well, that's big pressure, you know, for anybody right now, and uh, I don't think he's going to think any further ahead than what has happened today, and it is joyous news for Lance Armstrong. Five seconds ahead of Lawrence Jalabert, 5.26 ahead of Tyler Hamilton, and 5.35 ahead of Ekimov. The big news is... They've got four, three riders in the top four places there from US Postal. And if we go even further down, there we have George Hincapie finishing a magnificent seventh and only nine seconds slower than Lance himself. I think the big indicator there, Phil, is the whole team is on form at the right time. But this is the man who came up with the goods. First win of the year, he has to go back to the Grand Prix de Nation last year, which was an individual time trial, was the last victory that Armstrong had. But look at that. The man is back on form for the month of July. The question is, uh, can he keep it or does he want to keep it for the next nine days? No, ten days to defend the jersey when... Uh, no, I, I, I want to have a good race here. But I think you know, in the first few days, perhaps the, it's better that somebody else has the jersey. The fourth stage is difficult. The fifth stage is very difficult. So nah, we'll see. It's a bike race. Anything can happen. But you have a team extremely strong with Incapi, Ekimov, Tyler Hamilton, who have all made a super time. Yeah, it's a, it's a great team and a, a great group of guys. And they also know, like I know, that, uh, that this is an important time of the year. This is our time. This is the time that we, we have to be good. This is the time that they pay us. Uh, to, to win bike races, and, and today they also showed that uh, that they're prepared and they're focused. Merci and good luck. Thank you. Merci. Lance admitting to the French question, yes, indeed, he does have a strong team here, and they're all designed now to try and keep him in this leader's yellow jersey. 7.9 kilometers individual time trial going to Lance Armstrong, Paul. What a way to start your season. That's his first win. It's his first win for almost nine months. Remarkable, really, and he will enjoy that. And I'm sure he'll be quite pleased this evening when he gets to the dinner table. But a great ride by him. And uh, a long time since we've seen Armstrong looking quite as relaxed as he is today. Relaxed and relieved, I think, as we now face up to our 178.8 kilometer stage as we leave Roost in Germany and nip over the border now, back home for the riders in the Tour de Suisse because we go to Baal in Switzerland. This is a reasonably flat stage, this one. The mountain's still a little bit ahead on the riders. And so we've got 136 riders from 17 teams, the eight-man teams in this year's event, by the way, heading now over the borders of Germany into Switzerland, and then they'll feel they're racing on home ground. So, Lance Armstrong under pressure, not just Lance, of course, but his team as well. 
wonder if we get a chance to see Jan Ulrich out on the course today, Phil, because the race doesn't go too far away from his hometown of Merdingen. This is Lance Armstrong wearing 81 and the yellow jersey as the first leader of the Tour of Switzerland. The last American to win the Tour of Switzerland was Andy Hamston, and it's a long time since that happened. Well, it's been a reasonable day already for Lance Armstrong. He's had no serious problems. There have been breakaways. They've been brought back into the pack. None of the big men have tried. It's the sort of day they'll try to keep together. These are the last two survivors, and this is Team Coast Australian member Jason Phillips. And in this breakaway, he's joined by Phonax, that's a Swiss team, by the way, Lucas Zumsteg. And Zumsteg is riding well in the sprints, and he's built himself up quite a lead in that competition. They are the last two men out front, and the breakaway now has sort of disintegrated. We're into ball, a passage through the finish here, then it's out on the circuit for the last lap. That is the time gap, just over two minutes, nearly two and a half for the pack. They shouldn't be too concerned at this stage. I don't think they're too worried about those two riders in the overall, but what's interesting, Phil, as we speed by, in fact, you can see it's all coming back together. The pressure on the front is the pink jerseys, and that is Team Telecom. They will try and set something up today for Eric Zabel, but also very keen is the Farm Freaks team there in the grey jerseys. They're looking at Robbie McEwen to finish high up, and there you can see the last man to get caught there, and that is number 158, and he's done a very good ride, Lucas Sumsteg. So Zumsteg, having cleaned up in the mountains and in the points today at the expense of Jason Phillips, they've uh, swept back into the pack and now it's home of the sprinters again. Little tricky round about this one as they split up to both sides of the road. And there in the middle is a big can of uh, Swiss beer looking down on the riders as they go around it. Now heading up towards the finish. So nobody away now. This is going to be home of the sprinters once more. Remember, there are sprinters in this race, a race uh, like Robbie McEwen, the Australian, who are not yet assured of a place in the Tour de France. His Domo team might well be swinging in the way of people like Johan Musé and Wilfred Peters, because this year the Tour de France goes to Belgium. And poor old Robbie is an Aussie. Well, I think that team is going to be very predominantly made up of the Belgian part of the Domo Farm Freaks team. They're pretty close to the front. You can see the big long line of Team Telecom. They're launching riders off the front to control these attacks. They don't want anybody to get off the front because today they're hoping to try and keep it together for Eric Zabel, who this year, Phil, has had an unbelievable season. Again, taking out Milan San Remo, but already in the Tour of Germany and Tour of Luxembourg, he showed that he's one of the fastest men on the season. Well, that was Stefano Katai there being marked by the Deutsche Telekom riders, uh, the leaky gas boy. He's been put back in his place as the race comes together on the crack's heel in the peloton as the sprinters now try to get into position. Robbie Hunter in here for Lamprey Daking. He's also starting to sprint extremely well now. An attack gone from the left of the side. The chase is started here by a Seiko rider chasing him down at the moment. And that looked like it was Christian Pus who has picked him up. And they're together again, more or less. Yes, as Deutsche Telekom chased them round the final bend. Very tricky approach. Very nasty approach here. You've got to be right at the front and keeping yourself out of danger. Team Telecom not very organised at the moment, but they're getting a lot of help from the grey jersey Domo Farm Freaks team. Robbie McCune must certainly be very close to the front but it's good, Phil, to see that Robbie Hunter, the South African rider, is riding well now after a very difficult start to the season where he had a bad crash, and this may well put him in good stead for a selection for the Tour de France because that would be remarkable, and I think he would be the first South African rider ever to take part in the great tour. Well, it would indeed, and uh, all of Africa are hoping that that will happen because they will get live television coverage this year on the race if Robbie Hunter makes the team. Let's see. Now, Christian Poos here, dicing it out with a rider, can't quite nail down with him, but those two riders are clear, but only just, and not surprisingly now, it is the boys in the purple jerseys chasing down because Eric Zabel is in this race and sprinting like he's never sprinted before. He's already won 13 races this year, which makes him the number one winner of the season. Well, remarkably enough, seven of those have come in the last 15 days or so. Four wins at the Bayern Munich Rundfahrt and three wins at the Tour of Germany. He's absolutely flying. That's after a month off after the Classics campaign. Beautiful day again as uh, Switzerland welcomes back its home tour now into Basel, or Basel if you speak German, as they sweep through these narrow streets. Occasionally you will see here in Switzerland cars parked on the opposite side of the road. They don't always close the road right down, they simply use their hesitancy and just hold the vehicles while the race goes by. 
Well, you can see here, Phil, in fact, three kilometers to go. Team Telecom are having a pretty hard time controlling these attacks. And in fact, their tactics right now is to launch a man across all of the time. And they're sitting on the back of the groups as they go further forward. They're having a difficult time getting the big train organized at the front. And it looks like Faso Bortolo have got a man up there at the moment. Difficult to see from this height. But it looks as if that may well be somebody like Leonardo Giordani, the under-23 world champion from Lugano a couple of years ago. Well, whoever it was has just been swept up by the pack here. That'll be the two-kilometer bridge over the road as they now rethink the situation. This is a very difficult approach around these roundabouts, too, on the inside. Obviously, a left turn there as they come round on these beautifully surfaced roads here in Switzerland. Long, thin line, as you say, Paul, you're right. They are finding it difficult to control. It's not the big organization. They've got one man on the front right now, but we can't see the big long line of pink. It looks like George Hincapie also moving to the front of the pack here. This is Andreas Clear, the German rider on Team Telecom, but you can see there's no big train right now as Aldag, the German national champion, moves forward. There's Zabel coming to the front for the first time, right on the tail of his favorite teammate, Gian Matteo Fanini. And Boltz, Udo Boltz has hit the front now as well as the attacks have started to be launched. Zabel is tucked in the middle there, but he's going to have to control these last attacks as they head up to the kilometer to go. One rider going clear. I think it's a Fasa Bortolo rider again, but the string is after him as they swing out, come out of that arrow tip, chase down their man now, pin him down. He's lost this one. He's gone far too soon, but Zabel is still to get into position if he's going to take it. A lot of nudging of shoulders going down there. Everybody's trying to stay right in the first seven or eight positions at the moment, you can see, Phil. But what's happening is the, the real sprinters are moving up around the outside, trying to move to the front, but they don't want to be right in the front. There's Robbie Hunter on the left-hand side, but Zabel now getting boxed in in about eighth place. Well, the man in the white jersey falling back, he's trying to pick up Zabel, is Ralph Aldag, the champion of Germany. But again, a big switch around. There's no team can control the head of this bunch today. Just now, they're rushing at them from all sides. Uh, Fonak are getting mixed in with it as well, as they're trying to put a sprinter up at the top in Buxhofer. But this long, thin line again calming down. The most unusual approach to the finish here in Baal. They've seen the finish, don't forget, as we saw earlier. They've been through the line, they know the approach. Now it's a matter of getting it right, and they're going to have to read this one in the last few metres, I think. Well, the young South African, Robbie Hunter, looking very good there in fifth place. There is the Flamme Rouge, the international sign indicating 1,000 metres to go. And there's a pause at the front, that's a dangerous moment when nobody wants to take up the pacemaking. Zabel well back there now in about 10th or 12th place. It's Lamprey on the front, there in second position. Now, Robbie Hunter, now this would be a move for Hunter. Already a great sprinter, he's proved that in the Tour of Spain in the past, but he's now going to have to fight off some of the fastest men in the world. Gian Matteo Fagnini is the rider who's got himself in front of Zabel as usual, but he's still, they're both boxed in on the inside there, and they're not too sure how to get out of this one, I don't think, at the moment. Andreas Klier is the lone man in purple on the right, but the three of them now swept away as the race is being led up towards the line now. And again, the rider here, Robbie Hunter, looking over his shoulder to see what's going to happen. Now the run is coming on the left of our screen, and this is the move that Hunter's waiting for and trying to take him on shoulder to shoulder. But Eric Zabel has launched a real good move here now as they come up towards the line at 100 metres. This is going to be a tussle now as we've got to Yannick Tom back in there too. But on the line, Zabel has got it, and it looked to me as though the Mappe man was Paolo Bettini as they all come over the line together. More than 100 riders here getting the same time. Well, look at that. You can see Eric Zabel. This man is absolutely superb at the moment. Nobody can challenge him. He was bought Boxed in with about a kilometre to go, he moved himself further forward. Gian Matteo Fanini put him right in the ideal place. He seemed to be loosening off just a little bit as he came up to the line, but that's enough for Eric Zabel to get win number 14 of the season. What an incredible man he is. I've said it before, he's such a nice guy as well. He doesn't seem to uh, show us this aggression when you speak to him off the bike, but he times those sprints so well. There's the face of Robbie Hunter, who's got his place in the Tour de France, and we'll be seeing a lot of Eric Zabel when he gets down to the finishes, especially on the days in early France and through Belgium. There's Bettini, the little man in the middle, who is himself a pretty first sprinter. Doesn't normally win bunch sprints, although he got one this year in the Tour of Langkawi. In Malaysia, there's the push, though, and Eric Zabel gets it over Bettini. As Solius Ruskis of the Gerolsteiner team is the man to our right here in white with that red crash helmet on. Tombak is the cofferdist man, and I think the other man just flashing through. Yes, it was. Robbie Hunter in fourth place and Sasson uh, in sixth place there. All given the same time, as indeed was virtually everybody in the bike race today. 
and there was only a couple of riders abandoned the race, Le Danois and Frank Perk from Francaise des Jeux, both giving up today. There he is, though, all smiles. Looks as though he hasn't been out on his bike yet. Perhaps the race hasn't started. Not a bead of sweat on him. Eric Zabel, win number 14, Paul. He's going to be a tough man when it comes to the Tour de France, Phil, because certainly he is rapid. A good day for Lance Armstrong, too, because finishing in the main field, not a second lost for him, so he's still at the top of the leaderboard in the yellow jersey. And this is quite important because keeping the yellow jersey at the Tour of Switzerland, he will get himself UCI ranking points every day that he wears that jersey, Phil, and he's getting closer to the number one position in the world and I don't think an American has ever held that position no and it's coming as you say very close for him there's the situation after the end of stage two Armstrong now three seconds ahead of Cervais Canavan who had a good day looking further down there George is in seventh place still of Wouters did a good time to our stays ninth and Alexander Vinukarov there in 11th. All these riders sped by a hatful of seconds as we go right down the field. Well, now we're moving on, and we're going on to stage three, which will take us from Reynac to Bar, as we stay forevermore in this race now in Switzerland. Just over 100 miles, 162.7 kilometers, and this is going to be a little bit undulating today for the riders, and the weather hopefully will still stay great. Here we are, leaving Reynac at 303 meters above sea level, fairly flat with a few ripples as we get down towards the finish in bar where we've got these little circuits and uh, all at a level with a nasty little climb on it. Anyway, let's go to the start line. Little chat here with his mate Ekimov, Lance Armstrong in yellow. Well, Ekimov beating Armstrong in that individual time trial last year in Sydney and I think Armstrong was fairly happy that the win went to his own team and not to Jan Ulrich who finished second. Ekimov starting in a previous, in an earlier group on the day, but certainly after 12 years after he won the individual pursuit title, coming up with that top gold medal in the time trial was pretty impressive, Phil. Yes, it was, and it just shows you how old I am, Paul, because I was actually at the Olympic Games when he won that medal on the track as well. We didn't know too much about him then, of course, except he was one of those riders in the red jersey of the Soviet Union that seemed to be so unbeatable. Let's go to the action, moving into the race now. This is the breakaway of the day, Bortolami and Peter Rollick of Gerolsteiner. Now, this breakaway getting clear after 70 kilometres today of the 162.7 to race. Bit of an audacious move, I think, this, Paul, by somebody like Bortolami, especially after his brilliant win this year in the Tour de Flanders. He rode pretty well the week after as well in the, in the Paris-Roubaix bike race, but we haven't seen very much of him since then. He is a man who's ridden well over the years, in fact, a former winner of the World Cup, and this is a serious move. I don't think they'll chase down too hard either because he's not really regarded as a man who is going to win this bike race overall because he's always been very limited in the mountains, and we're going to go through some pretty big mountains before we get to the finish of this bike race in Zurich. That's right, and the time trial to come, of course, to Cran Montana, well, they're all saying, especially Lance Armstrong, that that is very similar to the mountain time trial in this year's Tour de France, and uh, so Armstrong wants to test himself there. But there's a few days before that. Portal Army here, not a great climber, but turning out to be a very, very good all-round bike rider. Just when we thought he was going over the hill and into retirement, he produced an absolutely inspired Tour de Flanders in April, and now he's testing himself very early on today. There's the gap, the felt is at 8.43, at kilometres to go, 52. It's a huge margin right now, but there's no sense of urgency at all when you look here at the faces of the US Postal Service riders. They're quite happy just to set a nice tempo on the front. Very happy, I think, to be riding the Tour of Switzerland. A complete change in the preparation for Lance Armstrong, who normally in the past has gone to the Dauphiné Libéré for his test. But because of this uphill time trial on the way to Cran Montana, he's decided to use this as a test for this year's Tour de France. The gap coming down now. 4 minutes and 35 seconds with 5 kilometres to go. They won't catch these two, Phil, and it's going to make a complete turn at the top of the tables. Well, it really is a beautiful country, Switzerland, as you can see, and the roads are usually in this sort of condition. Excellent, despite the fact that they get pretty tough winters. And these two riders have given of their best today. This has been a tremendous escape, and I think, in fairness, it's exactly what Lance Armstrong might have wanted. The only trouble is that Bortolami has a lead now that should give him the yellow jersey. Whether that's a planned tactic by Armstrong or whether it's just come about that way, I'm not so sure. Uh, but this man has the lead. If they can hang on to the gap as it is now, he'll become the new race leader. 
I don't think Armstrong wants the pressure, Phil, of trying to win the Tour of Switzerland. He's come here for a couple of things, to try himself out in the prologue time trial. That has been and gone, and he was successful. And next uh, goal for him is the individual uphill time trial to Crown Montana. So I think he'll be happy to lose the, the yellow jersey today to somebody else that takes the responsibility away from his team. He doesn't want to crucify the team before he goes through to the Tour de France. Portolami starting the day, 34 seconds off the yellow jersey after the time trial primarily because they were all in the same time yesterday at four kilometres to go, so he hasn't got to finish much ahead now to be the race leader. And that'll be another little feather in his cap. A man has won the two or three, three in fact from memory, World Cup races, Portolami, but nothing too big in the last couple of years. Had a lot of bad luck, plenty of crashes, even had a broken arm at one stage. But here's a man now refining himself this year on the Tacconi Sport Vini Calderola team. At almost uh, 33 years of age, he'll be 33 in August, he's had 23 victories throughout his career, and I think the biggest victory for him really was winning the World Cup, and that was a fairly remarkable performance. Right now, he's thinking how he's going to try and outwit his teammate, these, his, his teammate for the day, I should say, because these two riders have been out of the front of this bike race for an awful long time. But Gianluca Bortolami is a very clever bike rider, and if I cast my mind back to a couple of years ago, I think he outwitted a Johan Museo when it came down to the sprint of the championship of Zurich on the track, so he's quite a good finisher, and it's always a strange finish, Phil, when you come down to a two-man sprint after a long breakaway. Well, it's certainly been that today. If they reach the finish together, and really I think they will, although the gap is coming down quite quickly, they're going to have to hold the pressure to get there ahead of the field, which are now chasing quite hard. But uh, it does mean if they do get down there together, just under 100 kilometres in the lead today. That's a tough way to get the fruits of the victory. And one of them won't, of course. Peter Rollick is not a big winner. He's won only two races in his career. And certainly none that this year. He's an Austrian. There's the peloton, you see, being driven, as one would expect, by US Postal, but they might well say, well, if the sprinters of Zarbel's team, for example, want to win again, they should come up here and give us a hand out. Otherwise, those two are going to make it to the line. Well, you can see the sprint of teams have decided today that they're not going to get the victory. They've shut down. They're not chasing down these two leaders right now. So victory will go to one of those two men at the front as they take this little right-hand bend under the banner, indicating to them around about five kilometres left to go to the finish. No pressure at all. They have just made sure that the limit was reasonable. They didn't want that group to go ten minutes to the finishing line, and they brought it down to a reasonable amount. And today, I think, we'll see the jersey slipping away from Armstrong, and that would be rather a good thing for him because for him the most important rendezvous of his season is the one that comes up in the month of July not too long away now and that is the Tour de France well here we have uh, the two leaders the latest check we've got is a shade over three minutes so oh the, no it's 422 they're saying still here at three kilometers to go so the chase is gonna not make it now there's no way uh, they're gonna pull back four minutes plus in the final three kilometers the roads aren't even in the favor of the big chase because they're still very narrow here in Switzerland twisting and turning, the riders are always out of sight, and there's no way that the chasers can really organise this. They're not coming in down a big highway where they can put the teams on the front and do 55 kilometres an hour. I think they're looking good now. These small, narrow roads actually do favour the breakaway at the moment. One thing the riders appreciate, Phil, about the Tour of Switzerland is the quality of the surface here of these roads. They're always very smooth. They're not rough roads at all, and you pick up pretty high speeds. But for these two guys, they've certainly been out of sight and out of mind today. You can see both of them throwing away every last little bit of food they've got in the back pockets. This is not really a weight-saving measure. It's more a psychological measure when they come down to the final sprint. And very often, in the last kilometre or so, the rider will eject his bid on as well, just to make sure that he feels as light as possible. Bortolami quite content now to take up second position. He's trying to just ascertain just how strong he thinks Peter Vrolik is at the moment, and just deciding how he's going to handle the sprint when it comes down to the finishing line. Well, he might just be pleased enough to be in the leading break, but we'll see, because Bortolami is a reasonable finisher, as we saw in the Tour of Flanders. He's also a very strong all-rounder, and he's looking extremely cool out there, considering that it's just over 90 kilometres since they broke away from the main field. The gap continuing to come down, but still, no way they're going to catch these two now. They can start thinking about who is going to take out the stage. And there's no doubt, I don't think anyway now either, and Bortolami is going to be the next leader of this race. And here's a man who's going to be very difficult to get off the top of the leaderboard because he's a very solid bike rider. Inside the last kilometre now, there's the bid on has been left behind, and they're going to tee up in the last 500 metres for a two-man sprint. They daren't 
that type jockey for position too much like this, Phil, because they've got a long advantage over the main field. Bortolami wants to keep as much of that advantage as possible to keep the yellow jersey on his shoulders until we get into the big mountain stages. A little bit of picture breakup, the usual old problem with the camera bike sending signals up to the helicopters. It's not your television, by the way, nor your video player. As we watch now, the two leaders coming into bar. They both want the win. And it's almost as if Bortolami's prepared to throw away a yellow jersey here because he wants the stage win more than the lead, I think, as they come to the cat and mouse tactics. And now the time must be closing down dramatically. Well, Bortolami doesn't want to lead out the sprint, but he's in first position at the moment. He's just waiting for a hint of air as you can, as he knows when the man behind Peter Vrolik will start the sprint. But I think Bortolami's the kind of rider who's got the pressure and the strength to lead this sprint out from the front. But it's very nervous when you slow down like this. Friends for three hours, and now they're going to be enemies for 300 metres. That's the way it is in any bike race, as they both want to win the stage here now. The crowd's there, no, no barriers. They're very orderly in Switzerland, as they watch the two leaders come towards the line now. And the Bortolami has been put into the lead where he doesn't want to be, and Rolick is very happy with that. At 200 metres to go now, Bortolami is going to have to lead from the front and give all of his strength to hold it. But judging by the way he's riding, I don't think Rolick has got any strength at all to come by him. Gianluca Bortolami will get the stage win, and I'm sure he will get the yellow jersey as well. Well, that was a very impressive sprint, Phil. He just let it out from the front. Look at this. As soon as the gear kicked in, there was no chance at all for Vrolik. Vrolik was actually battling just to stay on the wheel of the man in first place there. No possible challenge at all. Bortolami, a very strong bike rider, getting his second win of the season after the Tour of Flanders in April. Well, he hasn't won much, but what races has he won? The Tour de Flanders World Cup, and now a stage in the Tour de Suisse, which has given him the overall lead as well. As we bring to an end now, day three here of the Tour de Suisse, we've entered Bar, and the riders now, having pedalled in the past three days at 349 kilometres. One more look at that sprint, and Rolick knew as soon as the sprint started, he didn't have the legs to get round the man from Italy. Big strong boy, that man on the front there going over the line, but now the main field coming into the town, and I wonder if we'll see Eric Zabel at the front of the main pack once again. There's not very many pink jerseys at the front of this main field. Zabel may well not try today, because for him it's more important to actually go across the line in first place. Armstrong in the main field today, Phil, will have relinquished that yellow jersey because more than two minutes has gone by since those riders crossed the line. Yeah, and that's, he only wanted to finish by 30 seconds or so, and uh, that's gone by, as Paul has said. So a new leader in the tour, Gianluca Bortolami. Armstrong shouldn't slip away too much, though, into the pack, as uh, he's safely in this group, which is over 120 riders in this group today as they approach the finish. Now, will the sprinters try to take it out here as they come up towards the line? And uh, it looks like the lead-out men for Robbie McEwen on the front now. Fodomo looks over to see where Robbie is. Well, he's in there. Now, can he pull out the special sprint here as they head up towards the line? That's Tom back on the right for Cofidis again, uh, knocking them around a bit, but taking the shortest line around as they line up towards the finish. Now, the Gettelsteiner rider there is Ruskis. Ruskis also coming in. Tom back on the left. Runs a crash, gone down in the middle too. But the riders happily have gone round that situation as now it looks as though McEwen is going to get the best of them. He's done a good finish there, McEwen gets it. Well, I think that, in fact, was Arvis Pizix who went down, but you can see the reflexes of these bike riders, Phil. Only one man went down and everybody else got around him. Well, that was an incredible sprint in the end, but there's the result, and the time gap was 2 minutes 53 seconds back to the main field, led over by McEwen, Tomback, Ruskis, Robbie Hunter tickling the top again, Exarber, by the way, finishing in seventh. He was behind Hunter this time, and there we are. Uh, and then other sprinters there, too, like Nazon, Another man who'll hope to get some good sprinting legs for the Tour de France. Fanini there in 12th. He's the lead-out man for Zabel. Didn't do so well today. More than 120 riders finishing in the same time. This man slipping the field today, coming from the depths of the classification, 34 seconds down to the new leader overall now in the Tour de Suisse. And uh, good luck to Gianluca Bortolami. We'll have a look at the overall classification in a moment. Well, he's going to be a very strong and solid leader, Phil, for the next few days, and he's got the team to defend it. He will do everything he can to keep that yellow jersey on his shoulders for as long as possible, but he's going to have a very hard time when it comes to the big mountains because certainly he's never been reputed as being one of the top climbers in the world, but happy today to be in yellow. 
So let's have a look then at the overall. Bortolami leading Rollick, who comes into second slot just six seconds behind. Armstrong drops to third now behind the two breakaways. 2.35 off the pace, but all the men that Lance will be worrying about, I am sure, are still lining up behind him. So he won't be unhappy about the day. And the bonus is, of course, he doesn't have to defend that leader's yellow jersey on quite a hilly stage tomorrow, and I don't think he'd be unhappy about that. Well, I think he'd be pleased to have lost the jersey. Nobody wants to lose it, but he doesn't want to put too much effort into conserving that jersey over the next few days because, for him, this is a testing ground and a preparation for the Tour de France. He's always said that, and he will now try and take a back seat, try and stay in contact over the mountains, and then the big test for him, Phil, will be the big time trial to Crown Montana. The fourth stage from Bar to Wildhaus, 144 kilometres, starting to get just a little bit lumpier with a few third category climbs out on the route. Wandering around central Switzerland, Switzerland here around this beautiful lakes area, heading then, turning south and going down to Wildhaus. Hills in the middle, two third cats, and just before the end, the all in crucial climb, which is a second category climb. There's a little profile for you. Watch out for the sting in the tail. There it is as we climb up to the finish line in Wildhaus at the end of 144 kilometers. It's quite a tough climb, actually, as well. Now, it wouldn't be Switzerland, Paul, if we didn't get the locomotive alongside the riders, would it? And I'd have to say it's got to be perfectly on time as well. <laughs> Well, we're looking down on the peloton here. There's been a numerous uh, set of attacks today, but so far they haven't got themselves clear. There's the new man in yellow. Happy to be in yellow, by the way. He said after the finish that uh, he felt that yesterday was his best chance to grab the race lead. As he actually said, he didn't feel he had much chance of hanging on to it in the mountains. Well, he's a very good bike rider and he'll keep this jersey and he's going to try and keep hold of it today. It's a mountain top finish and a very difficult one as we go through a very magnificent part of Switzerland. And Domo Farm Fritz once again getting in the action, putting a man into the breakaway. Strangely enough, Phil, Robbie McEwen is the man who's gone out on the attack, a sprinter, and he's been joined by Christian Hull of the Post Switch team. Well, these guys went off the front at around 22 kilometres today. And I am absolutely surprised to see Robbie up there because he is a sprinter, but he might be looking for good training miles in those legs as well for the Tour de France and it's a good test. I think he's looking for selection for the Tour de France yes. team because he's not had a great season this year. He started off very well in Australia and we saw him have some excellent wins. But the thing is, the man he's with, Hurler, in fact, is looking for the win because he, f he lives in the town of Wildhauser where the race finishes today. Well, we should have guessed he'd go on the attack then and I suppose to have any chance he's got to have gone early, which he's done. Try and get the time between him and then see what will happen. The time gap has opened up, but it is not extreme. Well, they're not going to stay off the front for too long, Phil, because you can see that big long line of the mm. main field. The pressure is on, the speed is very high. They've got a gap of two minutes and five seconds. And I don't want to say too much about Robbie, but Robbie is going to need about five minutes advantage at the bottom of the final climb of the day if he's thinking about winning this stage. <laughs> I can imagine Robbie laughing when you say that to his face as well, because that's exactly what he would have said, I think. As we look down there, the time gap was indeed out to almost five minutes at one stage, so the chase is on, and sadly for Robbie and Christian, there is this very nasty climb up to the line, and that's when it'll all go wrong for them, I'm sure. Now it's nice to see CSC World Online mixing at the front, giving the boys from US Postal a handout. 25 seconds now, the gap. Look at the tempo here now, Paul. Is this going to launch Lance Armstrong onto the attack again, do you think? Well, I think Armstrong just wants to get to the bottom of the climb in the first 10 or 15 places. He'll leave it up to the others to attack, and I think he will just try and follow. Oscar Kamenzin is right in at the front there in the pink jersey with the blue sleeves. And here are the two leaders, but they can smell the breath right now, Phil, of the main field behind. It was 25 seconds, but I reckon if we look back, we'll see the main field. And there they are, the two leaders, McEwen and Hurler. It's all over for them, and the big names are going to come to the front right now. Well, that's always a sad sight after 100 kilometres in the lead. Robbie McEwen on the right, Christian Erler, the man that comes from the top of the hill town, drops back into the pack now as the pace goes on again. Big tempo riding once more. And this is going to be a tough finish. They are racing to the climb at about 45 kilometres an hour here. And this is unbelievable, the speed they are approaching this climb now. Well, I could be wrong about Lance Armstrong there because he's got almost the whole team on the front now setting the tempo to put him at the bottom of this climb in an ideal position. It may well be he wants to have another good test. He's come to the Tour of Switzerland to test himself for the upcoming Tour de France. He's got the whole team on the front here. This looks like uh, the face of Matty White on the front, the Australian. Look at that, it's real is pain. He's moved across now, Phil, to a top world-class team. And let's just keep our fingers crossed because, you, you know, both of us really like Matty White. We want him to get to the Tour de France. 
France. He had a chance a couple of years ago when the team that he was riding for, Tacono Vini Calderillo, almost made it. But today, if he rides well here, he might make the slot of nine men for US Postal. Well, he's named on the shortlist for the team and he wants the Tour de France, Matt White. So desperately disappointed a couple of years ago uh, when he won a stage in this race, uh, riding for a team which was later thrown out because of a positive dope test to Sergei Gonchar. They weren't allowed to start and he was a broken man because all he wanted to do was to ride the Tour. And I think this time around he will ride the Tour now and he'll ride for Lance Armstrong, the race favorite. This is Stefan Kajagar, the Norwegian rider on US Postal on the front. A revelation last year at the Tour de France when he was brought in at the last minute to replace this man, Christian van der Velde. There's Georgie Hincapi without the helmet on and a little bit further back, Tyler Hamilton. And you won't be too far away from seeing Lance Armstrong either. Well, there's some tremendous work being done by a lot of riders here. They try to keep control of this race. We've got uh, George Todznik up there as well, the Austrian man who's a very strong climber, and this is the race for him. There's Lance Armstrong, happy with the work being done by his team and still keeping control. And George Hink happy riding like a man inspired right now as we get ourselves back up to the leaders here. And this looks as though it is uh, Bergman, is it, from the post-Swiss team? Well, he's moving forward right now, but you can see a lot of riders popping off the back of this main field because this is real pain on the slopes of this final climb up to the the summit of this very difficult mountain. These climbs in Switzerland, Phil, are very rapid because of the smoothness of the pavement. You can see there that looks like uh, George Hincapi swinging across there. His job has already been done for the day, but as we rejoin there is Oscar Kamens in last year's winner wearing number one. He'll be looking to stay pretty close to the front this afternoon because he would like to go out and win this race for a second time. In fact, it can't have been Hincapi because Hincapi is right there in second place. Van der Velde is the man setting the pace on the front right now and he will keep the pace as high as possible. But what this very fast pace has done, Phil, is it's eliminated an awful lot of bike riders. I think just tagging onto the rear of this very small group now, I got a glimpse of the yellow jersey. So Bortolami for the moment is still surviving. Well, this is an incredible pace up the climb. It is blowing the peloton apart here as they're just sitting up at the back and saying, that's it, I can't carry on anymore, and dropping off. And slowly but surely, we are getting a very select bunch of riders here, and it is packed full of US Postal boys. Cammer's in, big test for him today, and he knows it, riding in third wheel, no reason to help out Christian van der Velde or George Hincapie, and Lance Armstrong just behind Cammer's in. This is a very, in fact, that's Tyler Hamilton now just behind Cammer's in. Then we've got uh, uh, Belly coming in onto the picture in the white, and a little bit of a slowing of the tempo at the front as they begin to pack again. Well, van der Velde swinging off, he's, do he's done his job for the moment. Hincapi now taking up the pace making at the front. Hincapi, fresh off a third place finish in the recent US Postal, uh, US Championships, I should say. He was hoping to get the win there, but in fact it went to Freddy Rodriguez in a very late burst to the line. Hincapi riding excellently right now, but a magnificent backdrop made here by the valleys of Switzerland. Kamen's in looking quite comfortable there in second position. Armstrong very high up there in about sixth, but on his shoulder there you can see the white jersey of Vladimiro Belli third overall last year and Luttenberger moving further forward and Belli don't forget the uh, some would say unlucky man to be thrown out of the Giro d'Italia with that uh, rather sharp right punch he put into the face of a spectator on the climb during the mountains but uh, Garzelli is up there as well a winner of the Tour of Italy last year and now this time around looking for a result here after rather a poor Tour of Italy the other week previous winner of the Tour of Switzerland as well and he will now I think go forward to ride the Tour de France after a very dismal performance at the Giro d'Italia. Hincapi looking very concentrated right now. His job really to keep the pace high for as long as possible before swinging off and allowing men like Tyler Hamilton to take up the pace making at the front. Armstrong has obviously come out with a plan today Phil to make this as hard as possible. There in the yellow and black jersey of Team Coast is Alex Zuller again looking to try and get a win in his home tour, the Tour of Switzerland but for Zuller it really seems as if his hopes of being a great stage race rider now are failing he seems to be moving very rapidly towards the autumn of his career I'm afraid to say you're right he's not in the Tour de France and that was a crucial year for him really a year old the next year might be a year too far anyway this is the Tour of Switzerland now on its final climb of the day as we head up towards the top at Wildhaus and the end of 144 kilometers the long breakaway of the day now struggling to get up the hill in Christian Earl and Robbie McEwen a long way behind the race as the leaders have kept such a tempo up now that we're probably no more than 20 riders in this league group. 
Incapi still setting a magnificent tempo on the front. It's magnificently lush, the countryside here in Switzerland, which is why I suppose they produce some of the best chocolate in the world. But Georgi Hincap is not thinking about chocolate right now. He just wants to melt the opposition, blow everybody away. It is a very select group. You know, Phil, I cannot see the yellow jersey in that group of Gianluca Bortolami, so he may well have cracked on the early kilometres of this climb. Looks like Kofidis has started an attack here as they try to move away from the field, and this could be an interesting little move. This is Inigo Cuesta who's gone off the front, the Spanish rider on Cofidis. They seem to be all coming to form as well at the moment. There is Laurent Jalabert with the pre-Tour de France crew cut as well. But still, Hincapi not ruffled at all, but there is Gianluca Bortolami. Phil, he's still in the group at the moment, so he's actually really... In fact, he's not. He's off the back, so Gianluca Bortolami has got to limit his losses if he's going to keep the pink, the yellow jersey on his shoulders today. And I'll tell you what, Paul, Paolo Savadelli was in that... Uh little uh, drop group as well so Il Falco from the Giro is also in trouble to give you some idea of the speed that these boys are climbing at the front this looks like David Bramati it may well be David Bramati but that's Laurent Jalabert but there's been a reaction at the front this in fact is George Tochnik who's leapt out of that group Phil and is about to catch Inigo Cuesta right now well an exit hill climb champion of Austria he's been a very very good bike rider George Tochnik but he's now going to try and make a bid here for the race lead as he leaves uh, Cuesta to look over his shoulder and see where the rest are and continues on his own. The sun high in the sky, the weather has been absolutely stunning so far in this race and now he looks as though this could be the start of the final cards being played. Well, the weather's an important factor for these riders looking at the Tour of Switzerland for preparation because even though the weather is magnificent, at this time of the year it can very quickly change here in Switzerland and from beautiful sunshine like this, you can actually get snow falling in the month of June. That's Belly moving up into second place right now. Jalabert in third place, looking very confident, looking very good, accelerating at the moment, looking over his shoulder to see if anyone's going to pick up the pace. Well, Jalabert looked pretty cool there. He passed Cuesta while he was on the phone to his team car. And now uh, Jalabert is saying, well, let's lift the tempo and who's coming? He's uh, actually looking very, very good at the moment, uh, Laurent Jalabert, after his accident. And you know, as so often happens, riders who are injured at the start of the season come so strong by July. One of the telecom riders in that group was the leading rider from telecom here, Alexander Vinokurov. He was wearing number 61. And you can see now Belly's trying to leap out of the front of this pack. I think smarting from that uh, expulsion from the Giro d'Italia, very unfortunate. I personally feel that the organisation should have given him a large monetary fine and a severe warning because a bike rider can't really control his impulses when he's going through a maddening crowd. And on that day, I think the Tifosi were just a little bit over the top. Uh, well, I couldn't agree more, but the rules are very difficult to bend when you when you sock uh, one of the spectators. <laughs> anyway, we're looking at Belly now. He lives to race another day, and he's being left on the front, and he doesn't want to be there. So this uh, pace that we've had up this climb has cooled now because the strong men have got rid of all the weaker riders. Now they're trying to start other tactics to get rid of one another. Another attack again. Is this Cuesta again having another dig? I don't think it is, but this is another Cofidis rider on the attack. No, it's not Cuesta, Phil. I think that, in fact, is Atienza coming out, right? But right on the front of the main field, the blue jersey of Lance Armstrong is very vigilant right now, and he's got a yellow tail on his, on his bike as well, and that's Alex Zuller, who is following the American all over the place. A nice little one-two, this, from Cofidis. Uh, first of all, we Cuesta, now with Atienza. Uh, but it's Belly who's keeping up the tempo and stretching that breakaway once again, all back together. I don't... Uh, we haven't got a good shot of the peloton to see how many's here, but there can't be more than 20 riders now uh, dicing up this final climb. A little bit of a respite now. This hill now lending itself to these attacks. We've come off the steep part of the climb, managed to get rid of most of the race. Oh, there's the peloton. Now we can have a quick count down there as the riders now decide on who is going to make the next move. Well, one thing's for sure, Paul, from this little group will come the winner of this year's Tour of Switzerland. I'll tell you one thing, you better count quite rapidly because riders are dropping off the back of that group like flies at the moment. The pink jersey there halfway down is Vinukarov. The yellow jersey in fifth position is Alex Zuller. Not actually looking too comfortable. You see the way the top half of his body is bouncing around. In second position is Armstrong. And just look at the way those legs are ticking over. He's looking absolutely perfect. Every time he's come out this season, Phil, he's been spot on with his preparation. Second in the Amstel Gold Race, second in the Classic des Alpes. I think we're looking at a very strong strong Lance Armstrong going through to the Tour de France. Well, he must have frightened his rivals for the Tour, I'm sure of that, and especially Jan Ulrich. Ulrich often rides this race, but he stayed away, I think, possibly because he knew Lance was riding, and so Ulrich's not riding at the moment, preparing privately. 
He'll probably just take part in the German Championships and then line up for the Tour de France. Anyway, there's more attacks coming from the front now. This looks like Simone having a go. That familiar little dashing man who climbs so well and has pure speed. And as we saw in the Giro d'Italia, tremendous amount of skill in every department. This is a great bike rider coming off a very good Giro d'Italia and nobody's been able to respond to that. In fact, one rider has. That looks like the telecom rider Vinukurov. He was the only man there in the pink jersey of Deutsche's Telecom and they've opened up a pretty smart gap already. Now, this is a dangerous move. Simone coming straight off the Giro d'Italia. He's a great climber and this is a good time for him to put big time between himself and the man who started the day in yellow Gianluca Bortolami. So the Tour of Italy winner taking on the Tour of Germany winner this year as they go neck and neck in tandem here again on these beautiful narrow racing roads of Switzerland as we've broken out now the valley onto this little plateau. What a lovely picture that is as the riders head up towards the finish. Simone is clear now and Bortolami is going to really have to struggle to hang on to his race lead. He's still in with a chance of doing that because of the buffer he had this morning uh, but it's getting slimmer and slimmer by the minute and that's a good lead for these two. They've opened up a pretty smart game already and one or two other riders have been dropped from that group behind it's been reduced in serious numbers right now not very many more than 15 riders Simone and Vinukurov and the Spitzer that means the leading group at the moment not very much more than 15 seconds but they're only two kilometers to go to the finishing line just two kilometers to go just over a mile to the line a little check over the shoulder there by Alexander he speaks good English, Alexander, though he's had to concentrate on learning French and German now, so he's forgetting his English a little bit, but we've known him for many, many years as an amateur when he was a brilliant amateur on the Kazakhstan team. Anyway, at two kilometres to go, they are chasing them down, and there's a reaction from the bunch. Well, they're being reeled in very slowly. Simone's on the front right now. He should hammer as much as he can up to the finishing line because for him the most important thing is to get time gaps, but they're both looking over their shoulders now. Now, this is a dangerous move. Vinukurov moving up to first place. A little look back and they've still got around about 100 metres. There's a white jersey coming across there right now that may well be Vladimiro Belli trying to react, but he's bringing up several more riders. The whole of the group now is going to try and attack, but this is actually going to be good for the leading two riders, Phil, because there's no concerted chase. It's each man trying to get across the gap on his own. Time check to Bortolami is more than two minutes. It's going to be very close. He may well be dropping out of that leader's jersey. And if he does, then the obvious choice will be Lance Armstrong back for yellow here. But now Simone and Vinukarov are having to fight out now over this last kilometre or so. And they are gambling they are because they both want to win the stage. And at the same time, they've got to hold off that chase group because if the chase group catches them, they'll have no chance. Well, Vinokurov looking over his shoulder there. He should be looking forward because there is the Flamme Rouge, 1,000 metres to the finish line. And these two riders have got to keep the pressure on, Phil, because if they start the tactics that we've seen over the last couple of stages, they're going to get caught. Well, this is the lovely little town here at the finish of Wildhaus. And they're under the kilometre kite, and there's nothing in this now. And all of these riders, about 19, 18, 19 of them in that group, will get the same time by the look of it. And the two leaders, if they get caught, could be included in that. And at the moment, the race leader is more than two minutes back. So he's gambling now on holding on to the race lead. It could be back over to Lance Armstrong, who is in this group, as indeed are a number of his US postal riders. The gap is still there, though. It looks as if one rider's actually leapt off the front at the moment. There's a lot of attacks coming off the front of that group, but a lot of big names in it too. If we can get in there, we get a chance to see just which jersey it is. In fact, it's Vinukarov, and he must have dropped Simone, Phil, because Simone is no longer there. Well, we never saw it, or at least our Swiss television cameras didn't see it. As uh, we pan the way to the pack, he has chosen that moment to attack. And this is a do-or-die effort, and I think it's a do, because here comes Alexander Vinukurov, who this year has had a good season so far with a couple of wins. He also finished third in the Tour of Valencia, as well as winning the time trial stage of the Tour of Germany, which gave him victory in that event. Now he's going to get a stage win in the Tour of Switzerland. The little rider from Kazakhstan is giving it everything here. And he might even manage to get close to the leader's yellow jersey as well with this performance. Because remember, Bortolami is down the road. Looks as though it could even be Jalabert there leading out from the back. Simone is still there, although he has been swept up by the bunch. This is man has chosen well. Alexander Vinukarov gets the stage win. Three hours and 39 minutes. Now the race for second between Simone and Jalabert. Jalabert is going to be beaten by Simone on the line. Then comes Kamazin, Rebelin, Garzelli, and Armstrong probably squeezing into the top ten. Just trailing in there, Tyler Hamilton.
Very well-timed attack there. I didn't see it happen, and the TV didn't see it happen either, but it was just at the right moment. Looking further back now down the line, we have to wait and see when the next man is going to come in in the yellow jersey because one minute and five seconds has gone by already, and we still haven't seen the arrival of Gianluca Bortolami. There is Marcus Seberg, the Swiss champion, a, a title which we, he will have to defend at the weekend after the Tour of Switzerland, as will all the other national champions of Europe. Oh, watching them all come in here, still haven't caught sight of the yellow jersey. Looks like Luttenberger there, just behind Marcus Seberg. One and a half minutes going by right now, and still no sign of the yellow jersey. It's going to be very close. There he is, Phil, right now. The time is going to be very close to two minutes when he comes up to the finishing line, and that is going to be very difficult. Look at the face on Gianluca Bortolami. He should come to the front right now, dig a little deeper and try and keep as much of that time advantage as he can. It's going to be more than two minutes. He's still a reasonable way from the line here. It's always deceptive these last few metres, and he's still steadily uphill. Bortolami is diving off to the right of our picture there to launch his own sprint for the line, I think, because it is absolutely touch and go now whether he will hang on to that race lead yes he knows it's a few seconds in it and he's going to give it his best shot he's gone early and he's just ripped away from that pack he'll get a separate time it's gone so well as Bortolami comes up to the line look at that two minutes and 21 seconds down he will just keep his overall lead good effort brave effort by that man leaping out of the pack there almost as if he calculated the amount of time that he had to lose coming across the time there it will go back to the time count but it's going to be very very close, Phil, and I think you're right. He's just kept hold of it Alexander by a few seconds. Alexander Vinokurov, congratulations, but that was a very yeah, difficult finale. Yes, the final was very difficult. It was very difficult to attack, but uh, I worked well with Simone. And then um, when I saw the main field was coming back, I counter-attacked. And then realized that we could stay in front. And then uh, I'm very happy with what happened today. It's a great victory. And it is a great victory for him. A very clean one as well for Alexander Vinokurov. Nine seconds better than Simone. Did well to get second after being picked up by the bunch. Jalabert coming with him there to get third, riding extremely well as well. Kamazin also in the results. Further down the list here, Vladimir Belli is eighth. Lance Armstrong just outside the top ten. In fact, he finished 11th and that was one place better than Alex Zula of Switzerland. And here comes the auto boost, the men that just stayed together to beat the time limit today as they head in to the finishing line. And over seven minutes has slipped by, and they were with the leaders at the start of the climb, don't forget. And so this has been a very difficult climb for them. Among the non-finishers today, Nicola Minali of Tacconi Sport, he's abandoned the race. 131 riders are left in the tour now as Vinukurov uh, just uh, waves to the crowd as the stage winner. He hasn't quite done enough to rest the lead, but he's going to be very close now to the yellow jersey of Gianluca Bortolami. Well, a great ride over the last kilometres there. Gianluca Bortolami feel just holding on to the yellow jersey of leadership at the Tour of Switzerland for one more day. But you can see he was seriously put under pressure in the mountains. Well, he's just about managing to smile, and who wasn't in that company? Uh, but uh, this is the reason why. 14 seconds, the gap, that's how he scraped in by. Rolick is still one second there, uh, further back in third, the two breakaways of the previous day. Jalabert riding superbly in fourth, Armstrong in fifth, and he's got his eye on everybody. Tyler Hamilton there also keeping a high position in seventh. Stefano Garzelli, a previous winner in tenth, Alex Zula eleventh. Vladimir Belli usually gets on the podium at the end. He's right in the frame, too. So the race continues now as we move on from the finish at Vidnau to Heerbrugge, and we climb the giant Col de Gotthard in this ride of 220.6 kilometres. We're now heading into the mountains, the ore category climb of the St. Gotthard Pass, and I tell you what, this is where we'll say goodbye to Gianluca Bortolami, I'm sure. It's only a question of who will take over the mantle of race leader. That is the profile that Gianluca didn't want to see. It certainly is. Look at those final two climbs, 2,000 and 90 metres. Alex Zula there, very comfortable at the front, and this is one of the first ascents of the day. Vladimiro Belli looking very comfortable. These climbs, Phil, are extremely difficult today, over 2,000 metres on three occasions. Jalabert not looking too comfortable, sitting pretty high on the bike right now, but announcing that he will be ready for the upcoming Tour de France. 
On the far side, the leader of Cofidis, Daniel Atienza, the Spanish rider brought into the, the French team for the tour. And Alexander Vinokurov not too far away from the front. But these are the kind of climbs that will suit Lance Armstrong. There you can see him not too far away from the front of the main field. This is Marcus Zeberg on the front pacing his brother. Beat Zeberg in second position. Well, not surprisingly, we are going to be up amongst the snow lines quite a lot today. And the St. Gotthard Pass itself is a 13-kilometre climb. Stunning scenery in this part of Switzerland, to say the least. This is the longest stage of the tour at 220 kilometres. And this looks as though we might be up behind Dmitry Konishev here because uh, this is the breakaway of the day so far. Well, a surprise move by Konishev, over 35 years of age. One of the riders who last winter announced that he wanted to retire from the sport, but in the latter part of the season he decided he was riding so well he'd give it another 12 months. And certainly he's enjoying his bike racing bike right now. But look at that backdrop. You very rarely get a magnificent backdrop like that during the Tour de France. Clear blue skies in the mountains today and uh, 25 kilometres to go to the finishing line for this man, Dmitry Konishev, one of the first real Russians to come to the sport of international cycling once the, the Iron Curtain started to crumble. Yes, indeed, and uh, not much he can do here except freewheel as quickly as he can down this magnificent descent because the gears are really won't be high enough to pedal all the way down as he cruises here at around 70 kilometres an hour. And this lovely low angle camera shot, the back shot, uh, backdrop of the mountains against his white jersey, very sensational indeed. Lovely, lovely roads, lovely descent. The gap is here, the breakaway forming early on again today. And um, there were a number of riders, in fact, there we are, just over 70 kilometres an hour, only slowing down for the bend. And back to the main field here, which still contains all of the race favourites. And the Swiss crowd cheering on the home riders and their champions, the Berg, on the front. Huge crowds turning out for the Tour of Switzerland. A lot of people taking the interest to come out and see Lance Armstrong riding the Tour of Switzerland as his final preparation. The time gap to Konishev over six minutes on this group, which is around about 30 riders in strength. Yeah, so we've had a little bit of thinning of the ways. No news on Bortolami at all just now. I don't think he was in that group, though, that's gone over, so I'm pretty sure he'll be out of yellow. It's a question of who will take over the mantle, if that is the case, as the riders continue on their way for Destiny, which is the climb of the St. Gotthard Pass. A real brute of a climb. It's cobbled in places, by the way, as they head out towards that too. A lot of riders from Lamprey Dakin in here, and bet your life that Simone is in there, a good candidate, uh, carrying his form forward from the Giro d'Italia. He was one of the riders who escaped all the controversy of the drugs, I'm happy to say. Same can't be said of Dario Frigo, who, uh, having been placed in this race last year, is now out of the team for good, Fasa Botolo. Well, this is a pretty remarkable backdrop. You can see the snow's only just melting over the last month or so as we join the back end of the leading group. And in fact, the leading group's starting to swell somewhat at the moment, Phil, as we look there at Stefan Weissemann, who had a very good classic season, the pink jersey of the telecom rider just disappearing off the back for the team car there. Stefan Weissemann most certainly will be a member of Team Telecom when they go forward to Jan Ulrich's attempt to beat Lance Armstrong in his defence of the Tour de France in July. Armstrong, the winner of the last two occasions, but what a magnificent backdrop that is here in Switzerland. The view of Switzerland awakening to the summer now as the sun replaces the snows and this rider, Dmitry Konishev, continues to freewheel his way towards the finish, but unfortunately it won't be the case all of the way. There's still a fair way to race here as the bunch are in no hurry to bring him back. They will feel very confident that they won't have any problems when the time comes in wiping up the breakaways. They're concerning themselves now with the battle that's going on in-house amongst this leading group. Remarkable when you look at the feats of engineering the Swiss have done converting these small valleys into valleys that have been accessible over the last few years. The workmanship that goes into these kind of turns is absolutely remarkable. Makes an incredible backdrop for a bike race. Certainly I'd rather watch it than take part at the moment because <laughs> they've got to go over 2,000 metres on three occasions. Not much fun at all. Well, that was a pretty hairy left-hand bend. Well, it looked that way from the helicopter because if you overshot that corner, there was only one place to go, and that was over the edge. Anyway, they're all safely round, of course, as they continue their descents down. Here is Dmitry Konishev as we race on towards uh, the big climb of St. Gotthard, Erolo is where we are. The crowd here, almost as if they're going about their daily business, not realising the road has been shut down for the passage of the Tour de Suisse. 
as the riders now in this back group are preparing for the climb. There's Simone on the left of our picture. Kamazin is in this breakaway. In fact, there is quite an influence of Lamprey Daking riders up here. Well, they'll be trying, I think, to do something for Oscar Kamens in last year's winner of the bike race, but Gilberto Simone is the man who must have the form after coming off that brilliant Giro d'Italia victory and capping it all off with a very impressive mountain stage win towards the end. He will want Phil to try and win this bike race before he then rests up for the latter part of the season. Once again, the group staying very close together, a large group right now, and there is no sign at all at the moment of the yellow jersey at the start of the day, Jean-Luca Bortolami. There's Vinukurov riding in fifth or sixth position, riding very close to the front right now. Armstrong, I think, will be happy with the situation out on the course. He's having a very good preparation for his Tour de France. This is a great bike race. I think he will be happy, too, with the weather situation because with this sunshine, the temperatures in the valleys are exceeding 25 degrees Celsius, which is almost 85 degrees Fahrenheit. And just uh, as far as we know, there was an original group up front which contained Laurent Jalabert, Peter Harillo, Matthias Buxhofer, Rolf Aldog, etc. And uh, Nicolas Jalabert was up there. But they've all been one by one dispatched to the back. The only survivor, as far as we know, is Dmitry Konishev. As they continue towards the end of the stage, his lead is still up. It's still about five or six minutes. Uh, but I still believe they're not chasing him down so much as just holding each other's attention in this leading group over yet another magnificent flyover. One thing uh, Switzerland is famous for are the great uh, feats of engineering of the way they've had to build these roads on stilts around the mountains of the country. It's a magnificent country and it has a great road system. And a pretty good train system as well. And one always wonders why they've managed to stay neutral for so long. I reckon with all these valleys and mountains, nobody's ever had a chance to invade the place. Well, that's true. They wouldn't let anybody in. Well, there's a nice little hairpin left hand. I'm glad they got it right as they lock in and continue to descend here gently towards the final climb of the day. Nobody attacking anybody. These are the strong men of the tour, again coming together. And all of the leaders, as far as we know, are here. There's no sign, though, of the yellow jersey. Now, on the climb itself, there's the cobbles I mentioned, as we continue to go upwards in clear blue skies. And uh, I must say that Konishev looks good. He looks very good. I don't think they're too worried about chasing him right now. This is Mauro Gianetti, the Swiss rider on Team Coast. And it looks as if they have decided today they want to try and do something. Nicky Abersold in second position. This is Beat Zaberg as well. There's Alex Zula. But it's not a concerted chase right now, Phil, because Dmitry Konishev is not a man who is really going to be a threat in the overall standings. That's very true. But this is uh, the climb they're all going to get the feel for now. And there's Alex Zula because this is the one now where they're going to test each other and I think Konishev will come back as a significance of the actual in-house battle that's going on here. There's the black Colnagos of Team Coast, which look rather sensational. As these riders continue, Gianetti, he's had his moments in his career, good and bad, as Mauro Gianetti, and he's still riding well. Back up with the leader, having a little chat here as well, telling them what's going on, taking on a few bottles at the same time and continues. He's working really hard now, is Konishev. I'm not sure Konishev was chatting too much there. He, I think his will was really much more of a listening part of that conversation. He's getting into a rhythm right now. It's a very difficult, rough surface here on this part of the San Gotar, and it doesn't seem to me, Phil, as if there's a major chase. It's all being left up to Team Coast. Teams like Lamprey Dakin and US Postal Service are taking a back seat right now. They're not too worried at all, and I think we'll have to get a lot closer to the summit before we see any kind of acceleration coming from the big teams, and that could be good for Dmitry Konishev. He may well survive today, and that would be a great performance for him, because after all, he's had two good wins so far this season as we look at the rear end of the pack the man going off the group here a former winner of Paris-Roubaix Frédéric Guédon the rider from Francaise de Jeux at the start of the day Konishev's lead 8 minutes 49 seconds uh, sorry deficit overall and that's what he's looking for with the lead at the moment um, he's been very close to the leader on the road but so often riders get that far and then it stops as we pan through the pack here watch out for the yellow jersey of race lead if he pops up but I don't think he will right now and Bortolami not with this group at all. A little bit of a problem at the back here as well, as we see Stefan Vesterman. 
dropping back and I'm a bit surprised Stefan is either going back voluntarily here or he's being dropped and I think at the moment the way he's riding he's being dropped he's being dropped there with uh, looks like Christian van der Velde on the left hand side as well van der Velde really basically just sitting up not really wanting to stay too long in this group he's trying to conserve as much energy as possible because he's not a great climber Christian van der Velde and he realizes today I don't think Lance Armstrong is going to be on the attack because for Armstrong it really is a, a preparation this year's tour of Switzerland and he will try and remain in the main field for as long as possible. But this man, 121, Alex Zuller, would certainly like to come up with a performance here in Switzerland. He would like to come out with a win for his team, Coast, one of the teams not selected for the upcoming Tour de France. He's 11th overall right now, 39 seconds down in the standings, and a good ride by him could put him at the top of the leaderboard. Bert Zerberg as well, Phil, looking very concentrated here. He's always been a threat as being a good rider in the high rankings of overall placings at the Tour. But this year, he's trying to perform well here in Switzerland. And these Swiss riders are really very much to the fore right now. I would say the Swiss rider who's got the best advantage in this year's race, though, is last year's winner, Oscar Kamenzin, looking very good and got the backing of a Gilberto Simoni fresh off his win at the Giro d'Italia. And news reaching us that Paolo Savadelli's called it a day at the moment. So to have two Australians, Scott McGrory, who's a good track rider, by the way, and an Olympic gold medalist on the track last year in Sydney. Back up to the leader, Kamazin. Is he in trouble? I think he is in trouble, in fact, because that was Moto3 coming up there. So there yes. we move forward. And in fact, this is a surprise because I thought Kamazin was looking pretty good. You can see the World Championship bands on there, a former World Row Race champion, and not going to be very happy with this right now. He's being tailed off the group, which at the moment is not seriously under pressure. So he is going to have a hard time staying on contention and repeating his win of last year. Well, he's brought himself down to what he can handle as a tempo here without panicking, and this is often the case with these big pro bike riders. They don't try to match the pace of pure climbers. He'll go up at his own tempo, try to limit his losses, and hope that he can do something about it later on. Well, at 10 kilometres to go, this is not the time to lose contact with the main group because you could find yourself losing five or ten minutes. So I don't think we're going to see a repeat win for Oscar Kamenzin as we look now a little further up the road. This is Tyler Hamilton, too, sitting up, I think, Phil. Hamilton got his jersey ripped right open at the moment. You can see, although it didn't look as if there was serious pressure in the front of that main field, a lot of riders now being put under difficulty. Well, there's an idea of the slopes here as we come towards the top of the St. Gotthard. It is a real grovel on cobbled roads to disturb the rhythm, which is awful when you're trying to settle down and climb at a steady pace. You get some idea of the rough roads on that bend there. This is a very select little group again, about the same size as yesterday when we climbed up to the finish at Wildhaus. But 5.46 still to the bridge the gap to the race leader, Konishev, and seven kilometres to do it. It is going to be touch and go. He might hang on. Well, if he's got good form, he should be able to conserve that because normally you would expect to lose around about one minute every kilometre if you're not riding well on a big climb like this. And he may well just be able to hold on. This is Konishev. He doesn't look to me, Phil, like a man who is weakening at all. A very good rhythm there, very good action, keeping close to the inside of that corner. Looking back down as he goes past their banner, indicating seven kilometres to go to the finish, with almost six minutes advantage. Unless something dramatic happens to this man, he should come up with the victory, and he's not a major threat in the overall standings unless we see some remarkable attacking coming from Armstrong. But those kind of attacks to pull back a man like this, I think Armstrong would save for the next couple of weeks and try and produce those on slopes like mountains of the Alpe d'Huez or the Tourmalet or Luzardiden. Well, presuming he, he gets his eight minutes over Bortolami, which is quite feasible now, with Bortolami not in that chase group, um, then he might become race leader. It will all be te depend on the proximity of this group behind, containing Armstrong, Belly, Simone, uh, Beltran, and all of those riders, uh, because uh, certainly if he hangs on to a gap of five minutes, it won't be enough. He needs to still get a little bit further ahead. But there he is. At the moment, I think, probably only thinking of stage victory. That would be... Uh, Enough for the day because this has been a very strong move, starting in a healthy group of riders, one by one shedding them, having to go very early on on his own. Now, he was the first ever Russian to lead the King of the Mountains in the Tour de France, so we know he can climb. 
And behind, you see, we've still got this in battle. And there is Lance going over that little gutter there, taking a good look at the boys, checking them all out, and everybody's turned off. Konishev has everything in his favour just now. Absolutely, but I still think he's going to lose a bit of time before we get to the summit of this climb. Lance Armstrong there, Phil, looking very relaxed indeed. I think he's actually enjoying this tour of Switzerland. He's come here for preparation as a small flurry comes off the front of the group. This looks like Manuel Garati moving out here. This is one of the Spanish riders on the Lampre Dakin team. They, too, will be looking to make themselves ready for the Tour de France coming up pretty soon. This man is 17th overall at the start of the day. And he is moving a little bit further forward, in fact, responding to an attack here from Rolf Aldag. But, in fact, I think Aldag was off the front in a small breakaway, and he's just been yeah. brought back into the fold. That's right. He was one of the original breakers. He's come back. He's done well to stay out as long as that. Uh, our camera's not able to get everywhere. He was in the group originally with Connie Shev, but he's now back in the pack and going down fast as we once more see further attacks here. Marcelino Garcia, the other Spanish rider on the CSC World online team of Laurent Jalabert. He's been caught now by the Spanish rider from Lampre Dakin. A lot of riders coming back from that front group which started the action of the day. This looks very much to me as if this Matthias Buxhofer from the Fonac hearing system team a very brave man to go out on the attack field on a day like this with these three huge mountain climbs. A very tired man he looked too, thinking, oh my goodness, I've still got to get to the finish now, but he's had a good day to hold them off this far, and although it is a bit hilly, it's not that far to the finishing line now, so he's in no danger of being uh, kicked out on the basis of elimination. He'll survive it. He's also had a good day out and will lead in one of the interim sprint competitions because he was scoring well in that. Now, looking at this now, this is still uh, one Manuel Garate keeping the tempo up nicely at the front. Now, Konishev might have trouble now if the counter-attacks have started. Garate and leading the Lamprey team, who've got uh, still at least... Well, we've lost cameras in now, Paul. We've still got Simone here, we know of. Well, this is Alex Garate. Zuller at the back. He's having a hard time. Zuller, earlier on, was looking pretty good as we go through the seven-kilometre-to-go board. In fact, he had his team on the front pacing. This could be the last time we see Alex Zuller challenging for the overall in a bike race because he looks like a spent force right now. He's not the great climber that he was before. He fought back to finish second overall in the Tour de France, and I think it's looking like it's all over for him. And that looked to me as if the Seiko rider behind there may well have been Lauren Dufo as well. Yeah, that was Dufault also in trouble. Another man who's missed out on the Tour de France, so his, his drive is not there. Here he comes up alongside a man he used to dice with for leads in the Tour de France. Now both of them languishing or languishing behind uh, what is left of this group as Buxhofer is also continuing to fall back. Uh, this group now is cracking big time and it's a sorry sight to see uh, Zuller in this sort of situation. There's Matthias Buxhofer as Dufault comes past him. And uh, they're just hanging on now, but they're losing time here because the Armstrong group and the Simone group is pedalling away in front of them. Well, Stefano Katai was the other rider here. This looks like another man in serious difficulty all over his bike. Another rider from CSC Online, another member of that early breakaway group. Nicolas Jalabur, that will be, I think, because he's the other rider. That group has finally cracked. We never did see them uh, because our cameras stay with Konishev and the chase behind. We're only just seeing what was left of the breakaway uh, that Konishev left before the start of this climb, all coming back one by one now to the main field. <laughs> well, that's an understatement, not quite the main field. Well, this is the Spitzer of the, of the race, the leader of the bike race, five kilometres to go from the finish, and Dmitry Konishev is going through all kinds of difficulty right now. This is an unbelievably difficult climb. The surface as well, as you can see, does not make it any easier at all. Five kilometres to go and still four minutes, 55 seconds. He's holding on, Phil, because there's no big attacks coming from the serious challenges. In fact... The fact that they're allowing some of the lesser names to go off the front means today they don't want to come out with the big challenges. Well, if it wasn't for the fact this was a bike race, it would be a lovely road to climb up on your bike, wouldn't it? Right alongside the snow line to give you some indication of the amount of snow which is dumped on this mountain every year and a tribute to the Swiss too that they can make these roads so clean at what is an early stage of summer. Still plenty of snow around. This is becoming a very select little group here. Now, Armstrong is there, there he is, and doing very, very well indeed. The Mappe rider is Manuel Beltran, he could be a big threat in the Tour de France. Simone is there as well, and that's Garate who's moving up to the front once more.
Well, Garati goes off the front there. I think they're trying to put pressure on Armstrong at six kilometers to go. Simone was not interested at all. Beltran there, 33 from Mape, moving forward as well. A very good bike rider. He too will be looking in at putting a form for a fine performance at the Tour de France recently and soon. Armstrong now looking good too. This now, Phil, is a group of just six riders. Simone, Garati, Belli, Beltran, Armstrong and Garcia Alonso. Well, looking at the list of names there, best place to succeed looks like being Vladimir Belli. He could get his hands on yellow. Depends how he survives the last few kilometres of the climb or indeed what the progress will be like of uh, Juan Manuel Garate. Uh, but this is a race now which has become a battle of just a handful of men instead of the last two days when we've had something like 20 men likely to take the lead. Bortolami is now out of it. I can confirm that as he will lose his race lead today for sure. I'll be at Zaberg there. Wearing number 11, alongside him, the two riders from Cofidis, Atienza and Cuesta. And a little bit further forward as well, wearing 111, Laurent Jalabert, part of that early leading group. George Toschnik there, 141. And wearing number 63, the man who has been an unbelievable rider in the Tour de France over the last few years, Udo Boltz. Well, this is a very nice piece of high-speed climbing here by Juan Garate. And looking good. The Lamprey team have really come into their own in this last couple of months. They had a wonderful Giro d'Italia. Uh, just that one black mark when Sergio Barbaro was thrown out uh, for failing an EPO drugs test. Other than that, they would have finished every rider in that race. And uh, now they are coming good here in the Tour of Switzerland. They will no doubt hope that this will continue into the Tour de France. Well, that's what they'll be hoping for now, the reaction coming from Simone, accelerating Armstrong into difficulty there, Phil, at the back of that group. This is Belly, the balding head, wearing number 21, kicked out of the Giro d'Italia this year when lying third in the overall standings. Also up there, Manuel Beltran, the, the lanky Spanish climber. In fact, they've pulled back Garate there, and they're looking over to their shoulders to see what sort of difficulty Armstrong is in. But what a climb this is. And just look at this now, spread over the mountain, the San Gotthard Pass, the Col de San Gotthard, and uh, up ahead, and our camera's leaving him up ahead now, Dmitry Konishev, the last time check, just over five minutes was the gap, so they're closing in, but not closing in very quickly. Hats off to Konishev, who is riding superbly up front when you consider uh, just how long he has been in the lead today and had to shed himself of all of his breakaway companions who we believe now have all been swept up by this rather select little group of five men. A very good group of five men, too. With the names that are in this group, Phil, it's also remarkable to see that Dmitry Konishev is staying on the front. Vladimir Obelli must be in a bit of a predicament right now because he's got a man capable of winning the stage, but he is thinking of putting himself high in the overall standings. And look at Armstrong there in fifth position in the blue jersey. Very comfortable just to sit back and watch all the other riders set the pacemaking. This is not his race. His race is next month in the month of July. But here he's showing already that his climbing is spot on form. Well, to quote a book from that famous author, Ina Blyton, the famous five are now all together here, and that's the way they are becoming in this year's Tour de Suisse, watching each other, matching each other, indicating to me, Paul, there is not one of them slightly better than the other. They just can't get rid of each other. Well, it's still a long bike race to go, and some of the riders are coming into form, having had a, a long preparation for the Tour de France. Some of the other riders are coming into this race after the Giro d'Italia, so they may well be trying to conserve as much energy as possible. Let's not forget that race was 23 days long, they didn't have much time between that and this race. So that's why I think they're watching each other today. This is Zaberg. He's trying to reintegrate that leading group of riders. And the five men, as you said, the famous five who at the moment are just watching each other. And he's leapt away from the group behind. And he will very shortly, I think, in the long straights here, see the group of five with Armstrong and Simone. And they're well, just in front. Well, just look at this here as Bietzeberg goes forward. It, it happens all the time, but when you race in your own country, you want to show your own country people just why you go out every day riding on your bike. And this is a fine, inspired effort by Bietzeberg. I don't know whether he'll get up there, but he's certainly got away from the rest of them, and he's now trying to lift his tempo. He, of all people, will know this road pretty well, and he's carrying number 11 today, which makes him the leader of the Rabobank team. His brother Marcus, by the way, was given number 12. 
Well, he hasn't, had a bike, he hasn't won a bike race since 1998, but he did finish fifth in the Henninger turn this year. He's a rider who's always been very consistent, but not a major winner. Really, the major wins of the family go to his brother, Marcus Zuberg, who is a very fast finisher and who currently is the champion of Switzerland. But today he wants to ride high in the overall rankings. It's a question of pride to be the highest placed Swiss rider in the Tour of Switzerland, which is why he's digging so deep just now. But look at that. You very rarely see a climb zigzagging up a mountain like that and you know when you're going up that you can see the top and wonder just how long it's going to take you to get there well that's always what happened to me anyway and look somebody threw a tin of beer down there landed right on that corner as well so that's not like Switzerland to litter the countryside well they put it there Phil because there's plenty of snow to keep it cool ah good thinking Paul well done mate well looking back now this is belly at the front here and also riding, and in fact, his belly trying to ride away from him. No, it was Simone on the left of our picture who's launched the attack. Well, they've seen each other at close quarters throughout the early days of the Giro till belly got disqualified. He knows uh, there could be big trouble if they allow this man to go clear. And Garate is also coming. This is a 1-2 for Lamprey right now. Strong bike rider, Gilberto Simone. He's finished twice third overall in the Giro d'Italia, but he wanted to win it this year, and win it he did in fine style. He's got his teammate up alongside now, and now they know they're on the offensive. They want to try and win this. This is a big stage for them to try and win over the San Gotard. But, you know, the man in front we're all forgetting about is Dmitry Konishev. He's still holding on. There is the clock. Looking back down, he would love to know just exactly what time, what time he has. And I think, Phil, he's still holding on to around about two minutes over a charging Simone. Well, we're a little bit in the dark, but it's all of that, I feel, at the moment. But these boys have lifted the tempo now. And once they get into this sort of mode, then they're going to eat into the lead of Konishev. And he knows it. He's hanging on now, that's for sure. Three of them getting clear. Now, where's Lance? Lance Armstrong is just there in front of the yellow neutral service car sponsored by Mavic there. He's riding at his own tempo right now. He doesn't want to respond to these explosive attacks by the climbers. He talks about certain climbers being explosive. Riders like Simone, riders like Marco Pantani, and that's not the way Armstrong climbs. He climbs at his own tempo, and on certain occasions, it is a very, very fast tempo. And I don't think he wants to push himself too high in a race like the, the, the Tour of uh, Switzerland here. What he wants to do is test himself. But if these riders just back off a little bit, you'll see him ride back into the group. Well, hopes are fading, whichever way you look at it right now, for Lance Armstrong to return to the lead of this tour. And Belly knows that if he can keep this sort of pressure on, then he will get the lead. And that'll be a yellow jersey for Fasa Botolo. And continue uh, where they almost left off last year, because, of course, Belly and Frigo taking the podium places. But they continue to climb. Armstrong is just in the distance there. But we know Lance some old. Can he dig just that little bit deeper? Kilometres are running out now for everybody. Connie Shev is still clear of the field by enough. This would be a formidable race by Connie Shev if he were to win this race today, having broken away some 25 kilometres after the start on this longest stage. Well, I keep my fingers crossed for Connie Shev because a non-climber winning a huge mountain stage like this does not happen very often at all. And look at that, though. Lance Armstrong has just waited for that group of climbers to back off just a little bit and he's ridden himself back into the group of five and not too far behind them in fact we just got a glimpse of the orange jersey of Beat Zaberg who too is riding himself back into this group of chases Simone now taking up the pace making on the front and look how he's riding along the white line that's a painted line at the side of the road and the thing about it is it's just so much smoother than riding on the cobblestones I don't think I've ever seen a cobblestone road quite as high as this one no, and not for so long either, because, uh, but it does seem to survive the winter very well. Armstrong is back, a big effort, and Lance has tagged on to the back, and they've all come together again. Indication, perhaps, that nobody has got the final show of firepower to break up this five-man group. But Lance must have hurt himself there. Well, he's going to take up fifth position right now, and the amazing thing about this bike race is you can look across and see just where everybody else is on the day, and these riders today are spread over around about 40 minutes. Just in the hairpin bend there at the back, you can see Zaberg. He's around about 25 seconds off the group, and Simone quite comfortable dancing on the front of this group. This is his terrain. This is the terrain where he really does like to show. So the Lamprey boys doing all of the work here. It's their responsibility, it seems, to keep the tempo high. They've got two men, two pieces of uh, firepower to try and get the top places on the stage. The tempo is eating into the lead of Dimitri, and uh, I was going to say, can we see Dimitri? No, we can't. So he's got still a very, very good lead. 
as we watch now riders still trying there's one rider at the bottom of our screen there just trying to tag on to these five riders and that must be Zaberg. Well, Zaberg is just holding on at the moment trying to pull himself back into this group Armstrong in fifth position just riding I think within himself but put under a bit of pressure earlier when we had those vicious attacks coming from Gilberto Simone he's now sent his teammate Juan Manuel Garate to the front to keep the pressure on they want to crack Armstrong today to put him out of the overall contention for this bike race although I'm pretty certain Armstrong is not riding and there he is he's popped off the back Armstrong has really struggled this last seven kilometers it just shows the depth of courage of this rider, though, where others have given up the ghost and fallen back, like Zulla and uh, Dufo. Armstrong has suffered, lost ground, and just gritted his teeth and got back up to those leaders. He will not give up without a real solid fight. And neither will this man either. Looking at a breakaway, if he's going to win, of almost 200 kilometres. That is incredible, and he still has enough time in hand to win the stage, although any thoughts of a yellow jersey, they're out the window now. For him, the only important thing inside the last two kilometres is just to survive and hold on to as much of that time as possible so he can enjoy the last 500 metres. He keeps looking down the valley there, Phil, to try and ascertain just what his time advantage is, but he's ridden a very sensible climb here, kept it to his own rhythm, not the same sort of rhythm as that of the riders behind, but it's been a steady rhythm since the bottom, and look at this climb, and it really is unbelievable. And to quote one of your old phrases, I think it looks like a piece of discarded spaghetti <laughs> across the slopes of the Alps. It certainly is amazing. There's our old friend the devil. He's training too for the Tour de France. That's why he's running up the mountain right now and doing pretty well. So he's got good form for this year's tour. And they're back to the chasers now. Remember, this is the race for the yellow jersey now for sure. As they try now to get rid of Lance Armstrong, but Lance is still hanging on just. And Zaberg is a little bit further down as well. This would be a huge double for Gilberto Simone if he could take out the Giro d'Italia and the Tour of Switzerland as well. And Armstrong sitting up, just riding a steady tempo right now. I'm not sure if he's got a problem with his uh, back there, but no, it seems as if I think that's probably looking for his radio and getting rid of that at the moment because I think he just wants to ride his own tempo up to the top of this climb. But he's in all kinds of difficulty trying to get himself comfortable. And in fact, that is the radio. He's looking for the earpiece right now. He's always, when he's under pressure, he wants to talk to Johan. Brunil. He wants those words of encouragement to drive him on. This man is still coming back, Biatzeberg. He was almost on before that flurry of attacks put him on the defence again, but he's going to catch Lance Armstrong at least now as he continues, and we're heading up towards the top of the climb where the finish line awaits. Well, that's a little bit of a dizzy shot, isn't it? Our cameraman doing well here to hold these images as we get some feeling of height as we head up to the high point of the race. And there is Beltran, who could be a real threat in the Tour de France. He's a great climber, of course. Here's Simone, Garati just behind him. Belly, the best placed, I think, now to be the next man in yellow. And this tour is turning out to be an absolute cracker. Beautiful climb as well. Incredible move there by Gilberto Simone, his teammate, putting him under a bit of pressure right now. He looks over his shoulder to the familiar sight of Beltran and Tobelli, two men who rode the Giro d'Italia, and a lot further up the mountain after a long, lone effort. Dmitry Konishev as Beatzeberg, a little further down the mountain, about to make contact with Lance Armstrong, who really now is just riding out the Tour of Switzerland, making sure that he doesn't lose too much time on this mountain stage. He's going to spend a bit of time after the Tour of Switzerland actually training here in the Swiss Alps, getting himself ready, finally tuned up for his defence of the Tour de France, hoping to make it three in a row. Yes, and that will be some news. He's showing us his form is there, although he might be a bit disappointed he's yo-yoing today. He didn't look to be any state of panic, though, and we've just seen him there looking for his radio. And he's not losing very much time, is he? But he is losing time, and it might be crucial. There he goes, and Zaberg almost on his back wheel now. Uh, he'll be a bit surprised, I think, Zaberg, to come up behind Lance Armstrong at this stage of the race. As we pan up to the four leaders and still no sign of Dmitry Konishev up in front, we think his lead is just over two minutes. That should be enough. Well, it should be enough. We saw him at two kilometres to go, still looking fairly comfortable, but it's an awful long way, two kilometres on a climb like this, which climbs up to 2,090 metres. Gilberto Simone comfortably in second place, and what a job of work is being done there, Phil, on the front by his teammate Juan Manuel Garate, a great bike rider who's been brought into Lamprey here, the Spanish rider. 
who I'm sure will go forward and make selection for the Tour de France team as we look a bit further down. It looks right now as if Armstrong has lost around about 30 seconds as we go to 500 metres to go for Dmitry Konishev. He's suffering right now, but the victory will not escape him. He's just got to survive for around about one more minute of suffering to take what will be a great victory, one that he will remember for an awful long time. But you can see how hard this climb is. This man is just about holding his rhythm here while Simone continues to drive at the front. Belly continues to hang on. Belly was accused of hanging on like this in the Giro d'Italia by his teammates uh, Frigo instead of helping out Frigo when he was in the pink jersey. But I'm not sure he can do anything about it. Again, he's having to follow the wheel of Simone as he did there. Back up at the front, though, this man, the crowd's opening for him as he races towards the summit of the San Gotthard Pass. It has been a tough climb and his whole body must be tingling after the ride over the cobblestones. But there's no doubt now he's going to win the stage. This is going to be put down, I think, as one of his finest wins. Unbelievable. He'll have some pretty nice pictures as well because there's some great photographers out on the course today. Men like Graham Watson taking photographs, and Graham loves a day like today with those magnificent backdrops of the, sm the snow scattered over the sides of the Alps to make some great images. But this man now is coming inside the last 200 metres, and what a sigh of relief he's going to let out when he crosses that finishing line. There it is, 200 metres to go. 2,000 metres in altitude, Dmitry Konishev is going to go across the line as the winner of one of the toughest mountain stages so far. A pro bike rider since 1989, this is third win of the season, but by far his best, and might even be one of his very, very best. It'll be the 34th win of his career. A pro since 1989, that's a long time to stay at the top of your profession. And he's now at the height, the highest point of this year's Giro, uh, this year's Tour de Suisse. As he comes up to the line casually, he's got plenty of time in hand to win the stage. He knew a long time ago he wasn't going to take the race lead. I can't believe he thought he was going to win this when he broke away 195 kilometres ago. Well, to cap that victory, Phil, bear in mind that earlier on he was alongside Laurent Jalabert, who couldn't stay with him. Further back now, again, Armstrong in difficulty. He's been left behind by this group. Beltron now is picking up the pace, making at the front. Simone there in third. Belly sandwiched in between the two in the white jersey. He won't know yet that his own teammate has come away with the win, and that will be good. Armstrong and Zaberg are locked together. Zaberg now, although he's ridden himself up to Armstrong, it seems as if Armstrong has recovered somewhat and he's riding himself back into the bike race. He must have found his earpiece as Armstrong now comes slowly back up to the three chasers here. Belly knows now this could be his big moment and what a double for Faso Bortolo that would be. Connie Sheva has won the stage and they could well be defending the yellow jersey tomorrow. I'm not sure Connie Sheva will like the thought of that after this ride today. Well, he's going to have to recover pretty smartly to, to try and defend that. You can see Belly is looking very nervous now. He's waiting for the attack, and that attack must certainly come from Gilberto Simone, a real explosive bike rider. Beltran, I think, now just happy to be in fourth position on the road. Armstrong behind, though, Phil, seems to be pulling himself back towards these riders. He's, I think, ridden a very sensible climb here over the San Gotard Pass. He didn't want to respond to these accelerations of the pure climbers, and he rode his own pace. Well, it's more than a minute now uh, since Konishev crossed the line as they continue to race the line. Simone, here he goes, the anticipated sprint. This little man can put in so well at the top of a mountain at 200 metres to go now. Simone comes clear for a clear second place here. He might just get in inside two minutes later than Konishev. Belly is trying to hang on with him because Belly really wants to get the yellow. And Belly, if anything, is coming back here on the line, but they won't catch him now. Simone will get the line first. There's the clock to almost two minutes as Belly comes over in third. I hesitated then, but Beltran didn't make it. Beltran will come over in fourth place, and 1.57 was the official time gap there. And 250 metres further back for Lance Armstrong as this is Gerate, tailed off just on the run in there, but he'll be happy enough with Simone surviving for the sprint for second place. Gerati hurting a little bit, and well he might. It's been a good climb for this man. He's ridden brilliantly today, put in a lot of attacks, didn't quite work out. He gets fifth, and not surprisingly, Bietzeberg is going to lead over Lance Armstrong for sixth and seventh places, and the clock still counts. Uh, 2.34 will be the time gap, but that, don't forget, is from Konishev. It's about 37 seconds he loses to Simone, and that might be crucial. 
Well, this is Jaja coming through now on Jalabert on the right-hand side. And there, Alexander Vinokurov, a man who, if he could have stayed in the leading group, would have been the yellow jersey this evening. But I think we're going to look now at Vladimir Obeli taking over the lead at the top of the board. Jalabert looking calm and collected, riding himself into a position to try and ride well at this year's Tour de France. He's supposed to be the leader of the CSC World Online team, but almost ended his career in the early part of this season, falling off a ladder while mending the roof and fracturing a vertebrae. Yes, he is very unlucky indeed, but you know, he should be delighted with this performance here. Look at him, he's shot away now and he's left them. Uh, we never consider Jalabert to be a climber, but he is a past winner of the Tour of Spain when he was simply brilliant one year. And uh, he can climb when his form is good. And here he comes up now to cross the line in what will be eighth place, having easily slipped away from the rest of the riders there to finish at 3.38. Well, a remarkable performance there by Dmitry Konishev, holding out 157 ahead of Gilberto Simone and Vladimiro Belli getting third place, 157 behind. Lance Armstrong a little bit further back, just outside of the top six in seventh place, 234, but keeping himself still high in the overall standings. And Jalabert, 339 behind in eighth place. There's no doubt that, in fact, Lance had a little bit of trouble on that climb. First signs of cracking, perhaps, as uh, we look further down the list on the day. And then we'll have a look at the overall situation. And there on the winner's podium today, though, first of all, is the Fasa Botola rider, Dmitry Konishev. Rather nice lump of uh, rock there, which is supposed to probably mimic the snow here on top of the St. Gotthard Pass. Very long climb. And uh, well, it's a bit like the Peru Bay cobblestone, really. And I suppose after all those cobbles, that's quite fitting. Looks like a nice piece of quartz. I wouldn't mind crushing that to see if it had any gold in it. <laughs> well, there's the overall standings. Now Vladimiro Belli does take over the overall lead fill by one second from Gilberto Simone. And Armstrong is still up there in third place, 25 seconds behind. So it's still close, isn't it, at the top? Even so, after that climb, look at this. Uh, down to 152 for George Tochnik in 10th place. Any one of these riders still capable of taking out this race. It's all building up for a very crucial time trial, which comes uh, from uh, Sion to Crans Montana, and that'll be on stage eight. And we're only just here at the end of stage five. But there we are, the man in yellow. He may have well challenged to be the man in pink in the Giro d'Italia if he hadn't have punched the spectator and got thrown out the tour, but there's no doubt about this one. At least he now has the yellow jersey of the Giro of the Tour of Switzerland. Well, he'd be a hard man to dethrone from the top, but he's having a good time there on the podium. The sixth stage for Mendricio. It's a circuit race of 174 kilometres with a small climb out at Monte Ceneri. It's a fourth category on the way out and a third category on the way back before heading down for a small circuit around Monte Rizio and uh, the final climb of the day over Novazzano and before coming down into Mendrizio for the finish. And the contour for you, beginning uh, at 330 metres. A little bit of ripples along the way, but this will be a gentle relief from the big climbs of yesterday. And let's start with the breakaway of the day, which got away again very early on. As the riders here trying to steal time over the field, the typical flurry of attacks, uh, Daniel Atienza is the Cofferdis rider. We saw him in action early on, had a quieter day yesterday as he's got himself into this a little bit of a league group. Daniel uh, Davide Rebelin is also in this group, wears number 71. And interesting to see, in fact, that Paolo Bettini has moved into the right move once again. This man we saw very, very much to the front of the, uh, the sprint a couple of days ago with Eric Zabel, and now looking for the attack. An excellent bike rider, Davide Rebelin, currently ranked number one rider in the world. But I tell you one thing, Lance Armstrong, if he, keeps the yellow, if he gets the yellow jersey in the Tour de France, could very well be pushing for that number one spot. That's right, because Casa Grandi, who was the world number one, tumbled out of those rankings once he uh, had to abandon with a broken wrist in the Giro d'Italia. This is the main field as they uh, trickle along behind that breakaway. And just to give you all of the names there, apart from Bettini and Mappai, Rebellin of Liki Gas, we've got Niki Ebersold from Team Coast and Atienza of Cofidis. And uh, they got away about 15 kilometres before the first climb of Monte Cineri. Well, these riders don't look too worried about the breakaway right now, Phil. Everybody just uh, cruising through. There's a bit of a shunt in the corner there. Nobody's actually gone down on the ground, but this is very much where, in fact, there is somebody down there, one of the CSC online riders. 
and uh, also it looks as if somebody from Team Coast has gone down as well. In fact, a bit of chaos there caused by inattention going around that corner. I don't think anybody is seriously injured. In fact, one young man going back for a new bike, I think. Well, yeah, they look as though uh, they're not... The, well, I guess he is getting a bit panicky now because his team car's further down the line. Uh, but nobody hurt, that's the main thing. There's the bike. And it needs a wheel. Looks like Rolf Sorensen, actually, 114. It was Sorensen. As we uh, go to the front of the main field, here is one of the toughest men in the classics over the last few years, Johan Museo. And there is the new yellow jersey, Vladimiro Belli. He's been around for an awful long time, this man. And he's going to be a very difficult man to try and take off the top, although with a one-second advantage over Gilberto Simone, is definitely not all that comfortable. Armstrong there having a quick chat with Museo, a man who he really does admire. A great classics rider, and at the moment actually thinking about taking part in the Tour de France. Here are the leaders, one minute, 14 seconds ahead, with 26 kilometres to go. Yes, and it's come back into manageable proportion now because at one stage this breakaway was over four minutes up, and that was significant because uh, Artienza, 14th overall, 4.13 down, was uh, the leader on the road, so there had to be some reaction. It's come on the circuit of Mendricio, once the scene of the World Cycling Championships, and now they seem to have got it back under control. But again, it's interesting to see that although a Fasabotola rider is in the lead, it's US Postal constantly driving this race at the front. Quite clearly, Armstrong wants this race kept tight. Wants to keep it together at the front. There's a little move coming here. This is Atienza trying to launch himself on the front on this slight ramp as we get a little bit closer to the finish line. And you can see one or two riders, the fatigue starting to creep into their bodies right now because they're not responding quite as easily to these attacks. No, Atienza has hurt the team coast rider here, Abersolt, and they're falling off the pace a little bit, so his two riders trying to go clear now. Atienza and David Revelin, there's the details on this little fourth category climb for you, very briefly, I'm afraid, as we're now seeing here Revelin hanging on to Atienza, who's trying to push home an advantage and get something out of this for Cofidis. Cofidis are having a wonderful season this year with a variety of riders, which is nice to see, and they'll be hoping for that luck to continue uh, through the uh, Tour de France, which will start soon after this race finishes. I think they're quite happy to have gotten rid of uh, Frank Vandenbroeker. In fact, Vandenbroeker again in difficulty with the team and uh, obviously not going to start the Tour de France. He didn't turn up for the Tour of Luxembourg just recently and he's been summoned to meet the team management in Milano and uh, there are talks that he may well find himself sacked and kicked out of the team. So the turbulent career of the young man from Plugstert in Belgium still continues. Yeah, it's really a sad situation with Frank. He doesn't seem to mentally uh, get himself in the right order for the big-time cycle races. He struggles with himself as well as finding his form on a bike. Let's wish him well. Hope things change for the better sooner or later. But now we're looking at Atienza here. Time out for a bit of lunch? I don't think so. As he eats, he drives on, and Rebellin there matching him wheel for wheel. David Rebellin has had a, a, a season which has given him for the first time his world number one ranking, but the field now is working hard and chasing them down. Well, that big long line now is stretching out. They want to pull these riders back into the fold. Those two riders built up quite a smart advantage at one time, but the pressure is starting to creep into the main field. They want to pull them back, and they want to have the whole race coming together because, once again, we'll be going back into the mountains, and I think that has happened right now. Yeah, that's Abersold and uh, Bettini who've gone back, so only two of them still left behind now, and it's CSC, interestingly enough, uh, driving on here. Well, this is an interesting move. Uh, Martin Ritzel... The Swedish man on the front, there's Rolf Sorensen, he's got back then. And uh, they're thinking of uh, what is turning out to be a very good performance from Laurent Jalabert. Well, in the old days, Laurent Jalabert used to be a very good bunch sprinter, and I think they may well have been hoping to try and put him into a position to try and get one of these stages, although this is not really the sort of stage for Jalabert, or even maybe they'd like to get their men Arvis Pizik to the front. This is Vinukurov now, who's got himself into a small breakaway. There is Stefano Garzelli. He's leapt across to that. Massimo, Massimo Donati of Tacconi is in there, and the... Aggressive rider from yesterday, Juan Manuel Garate from Lamprey Dakin. He's moved up. A lot of very good riders moving into this group. Tochnik, oop, and a little switch there. Ooh. That was a bit nasty for Laurent Dufo. Yes, and Jalabert was the man diving up out of the saddle and driving through. And there's Dufo, 101, getting a bit tight in the middle there. As riders looking for somebody else to pick up the action, but they're throwing everything into this chase now. There's no way the two leaders will survive, but three men are trying to get clear here as they try to mix, and it was there. That was the move. We saw it by Jalabert. 
now driving on again. So after the hard work by his CSC World Online team, he's now taking matters into his own hands. Well, Jalabert certainly is an aggressive bike rider. That's obviously why CSC came to the front. He said to them, look, the legs are quite good today. Everybody else is feeling rather tired because the temperature is high at 30 degrees Celsius. A very heavy day with not too much of a breeze in the air. And Vinukarov has seen the move by Jalabert and leapt across. But the main field, Phil, is certainly reacting. Somebody's trying to come across right now. But they don't let a man like Jalabert ride away quite so easily. In fact, the man coming across right now looks very much like Sergei Ivanov. He's the Russian champion, rides for Faso Bortolo, which is why the jersey's a little different to the white jersey, the overall leader for Vladimir Obeli, who actually is in yellow today. But uh, we saw a great domination by them yesterday with the win coming from Dmitry Konishev. Well, Ivanov trying to get on terms. It's an inspired chase for the last three years. The champion of Russia, no mean feat is that as he now tries to latch on to the leaders. And this is going to be a very determined chase here now. I didn't see them caught, but they have swept up the two leaders, as we've now seen the four, three front runners here. Might be four, if Ivanov can get across, but it looked as though Vinuk Vinukrov was checking over his shoulder there to see who was coming. There is the Russian champion, Jalabert, really giving it a lot of effort here now as well. At the one kilometre banner, three men are in the shout, and it could be four. I don't think Ivanov can do much about this now, inside a thousand metres to go. Well, this is looking good for Jalabert right now, but Vinukurov is looking over his shoulder. He wants more help to come from Jalabert, and we're coming a lot closer towards the finish line. And you know, Ivanov, Phil, I think, is just going to make it onto the back of that leading group, and it's absolutely split the main field this last minute attack. Well, I think for a the moment they thought it might have been one for the sprinters. Jalabert has sat up and allowed Vinokurov to go through, but look at that, Ivanov has tagged on to the back too. The champion of Russia is now there. Vinokurov keeps the pressure on as well. The Fonak rider is Alexander Moose, and this could be one of his finest ever performances. And uh, you get inspired like that when you're a Swiss rider. Uh, riding in your home tour, so that's the man in green now. None of these riders want to start the sprint. They can't wait too long because the back of the chase group there have started the sprint and they're coming up pretty quick too and uh, they started the action very early because they believe now Gartelli is leading them out that they can catch these, but they've started now and look at this, they've opened the arms of Ivanov. He's come round the back and he's stolen the day. Sergei Ivanov, who only just got on at 800 metres, gets the sprint there. Ruskis leads them over in fifth place. And I think it was Fanini this time who took the sixth place finish. But look at this, Paul. That is unbelievable. You know, Vinokurov thought he had it. I'm surprised that Jalabert is so far back in the sprint. But Ivanov absolutely exploded after that group after a very long effort to get himself into that leading group of four. But once the sprint started, you can see here there's absolutely no challenge at all. That's two wins in two days for Faso Bortolo and the yellow jersey at the Tour of Switzerland. This is turning out to be a great race for them. Well, there we are, the champion of Russia for the last three seasons. And just look at this, Phil, here. There he is, boxed in against the barriers. The door opens. It doesn't open very often, and when it does, you have to take advantage. He's got a straight crack at the line here. He boxes in Laurent Jalabert, comes straight by him, forces Jalabert onto the wheel. Jalabert's got to break a little bit just now. Full speed to the line. This is going to be a great win for Ivanov. Nobody could challenge him once he got up to full bore. Yes, a little bit of a surprise, but th that's what you get for making the effort, and he certainly did that when he crossed the gap to catch the leaders inside one kilometre to go. He gets the victory over Vinukurov, who's already had a stage win so far, now he's got a second place. Jalabert there again, riding brilliantly, and a good result for Alexander Moose as well, the Swiss rider. And Ruskies is a good sprinter, and he's showing it to us now, cleaning up from the bunch there when they came in. The man taking a bit of time out at the moment uh, is uh, Eric Zabel. He's not really interested in winning fifth and sixth places. He only looks uh, for the victories. Lance Armstrong taking 13, keeping himself out of trouble, taking part in the sprint. Again, timed in a gap of just five seconds. Congratulations then to Sergei Ivanov, his 27th win as a professional rider. And this year, just his second win of the season. And overall, no change. One second, still the margin between Belly and Simone. 25 seconds back to Lance Armstrong. These are the strong men of the Gotthard now who are holding the top positions in the overall classification. Could all change on the next stage, though, as we go to the highest mountain of the tour when we climb over the Newfoundland Pass. And uh, then we'll see just where all of these strong men are in their state of play. But right now, second day in yellow now for Belly. 
He is the leader of the tour, all smiles. He looks a little less stressed, I think, than last night when he pulled on the race leader's jersey, Paul. Looking very relaxed. A good day for him, no major problems at all. He stayed in the main field, didn't lose any time, was never put under pressure at all, but he will be when we go back into the mountains. And so it's on to stage seven now, from Locarno to Natas, 156.6 kilometres, not so far, but this is a really tough day, and we'll finish off right uh, with the climb of the Newfoundland Pass, and it's a long descent down towards the finish in Natas. But it's such a long climb, the Newfoundland, that indeed there's plenty of rooms for attacks that will succeed, even though it's not at the end. Just look at that, the high spot at 2,478 metres. It's a long one, Paul. It's more than 50 kilometres of uphill, in fact. Difficult climb. Stefano Garzelli out on his own. At one time, in fact, he was in the leading group with his teammate, who he left behind. He got away with Michele Bartoli, but Bartoli not renowned for his ability to climb huge mountain passes like this. Stefano Garzelli, a former winner of the Tour de Switzerland, Phil, wanted to go out and do something very special, and he's certainly doing that right now. And there is the man that was with him, still out in front of the rest of the race, which is breaking up, not surprisingly. This is Bartoli, the champion of Italy. And we'll see how he gets on when he tries to defend that title as soon after this race ends, which uh, all of the national titles coming between the Tour de Suisse and the Tour de France. He looks as though now he just wants to get this climb over with and try and stay away from the rest as long as possible. Once again in the main field, Phil, there's a bit of marking going on between the heads of state and these two guys, Lucas Zumstead and Martin Elmiger, have managed to get off the front, but they're not too far off the front. But at that point you're making about the national championships, I'm actually quite surprised that Armstrong came across to the Tour of Switzerland, but when you sit down and reflect, he doesn't have to travel around Europe to go and ride the national championships. The US championships were in Philadelphia a few weeks ago. Armstrong has now got a 10-day rest period from the end of the Tour of Switzerland to the start of the Tour de France, so he's got chance to get over this bike race before the Tour begins. And he's got to get to the end first, though. He's still a challenger, very much lying third overall, 25 seconds off the race lead. Simone poised at one second behind this man, Belly. There's the gaps. We've seen the breakaways. 4.15 back to Bartley, 11.58 back to the tandem we've just seen. And the field now riding at a massive 14.48 behind Gartzelli. But even with that lead, Gartzelli is still five minutes off the race leader's jersey because he is 19.29 behind overall. Tyler Hamilton sitting in front of Lance Armstrong there, setting a very sensible pace. As we look here at the face of Matty White, looking very concentrated. In fact, this is Christian van der Velde. Van der Velde actually proving to be a very excellent climber. This man came into the sport as a, a team pursuiter and an individual pursuit rider on the track, but since then, he certainly has become a very excellent domestique as we look at the last riders to go over the top of the Newfoundland Pass, 2,478 metres. In 2000, it was Stefano Garzelli. In 1998, it was Stefano Garzelli. And I reckon today it's probably going to be Stefano Garzelli. Could be a good chance of that because, in fact, his lead is still around seven minutes over the field as Christian van der Velde keeps the pace up. And the way the US Postal Service team is driving this race is a clear indication that Armstrong feels he can win it because we should be seeing the uh, Fasa Botolo riders driving this. Instead, we're seeing a team who are lying with a man in third place overall driving it. Well, one reason Lance Armstrong has come to this uh, Tour of Switzerland, Phil, is because of the uphill time trial. And he's only 25 seconds down in the overall standings. Now, if he puts in a sterling performance in that big time trial up to Cran Montana, he could, in fact, pull the jersey back onto his own shoulders. He's not been put into difficulty at all so far in this bike race. He's not very far down in the overall standings. He's not had to dig too deep in his reserves, not wasting any energy at all for the upcoming Tour de France. And looking at him here, he looks very calm and relaxed. Well, Belly also looks pretty good. So too does Simone. He's in his favourite playground now on these mountains. He loves the climbs and the tougher the weather, the tougher he is. This is the breakaway couple that are stuck up the road, uh, Lucas Zumseg. We saw him in action early on in this tour. I haven't seen much of him since. But he's still very much in this race. And this is the rider with him today, Martin Elmiger. Both Swiss riders and both doing well. Back up to the man who's setting the pace now, Stefano Garzelli. Twice before, he's topped this climb as the best man. One of those years, he won the tour. Now he continues to climb, well clear of the field, not looking for a race leader's jersey now. He knows that's not possible. 
because his lead has come down uh, to around about six minutes now under the impetus largely of US Postal. This is Tyler Hamilton doing the pace now, and alongside him is Armstrong, and they're having a chat. Well, Hamilton really replacing the, all of the work that was done in previous races by Kevin Livingston. Livingston now having moved across away from US Postal to the rival telecom team for the Tour de France and I think that is going to be a strange sight for Lance when they go across to the Tour to see Kevin in pink riding these mountains upside up alongside Jan Ulrich. And looks like it may be a bit of an attack here possibly. This will be George Todgenick if it is but he just moved up a little bit alongside Simone. Belly tucked in. No reason for the yellow jersey to attack. He's keeping an eye on the man with the one-second deficit. As we look out across the mountains, and there is the road of the Newfoundland as it twists and turns, climbs steadily higher and higher and higher, up to almost two and a half thousand metres. Unbelievable climbs. The climbs in Switzerland really are exceptionally high, but the difference between the climbs here and the climbs at the Tour de France is the roads are very good, and they're not quite as tough because of the smooth surface on them. Michele Bartoli, though, is finding it pretty tough right now. He's 69th overall, over 31 minutes down in the overall standings. The champion of Italy for around about another week, a title which he will have to defend when he returns after this race, the Tour of Switzerland, to the national championships of his country. He started the break here with his teammate Stefano Garzelli, but wasn't able to follow the pace of Garzelli. Garzelli, a much better climber, and I think just putting a finishing touches to his possible attempt at being a contender in the upcoming Tour de France because he absolutely slumped in the recent Giro d'Italia where he had to pull out with bronchitis. Yes, and he's making amends today, a little bit anyway, as he continues to lead the field. Elmiger has decided to throw in the towel and fall back to the group. His uh, legs not making the top of the Newfoundland before the others anyway. As he now checks out the riders going through, he won't be surprised to see the boys in blue setting the pace. Tyler putting an awful lot of work in. This man has become an excellent domestique for Lance Armstrong. He can ride high in the overall standings himself because he has proved to be an incredible time trialist. Whenever you look at Tyler Hamilton ride a time trial, he really doesn't look like the man who can ride fast. He doesn't have an aerodynamic position, but it works very well for him. Further up the mountain, Il Cato, the man they call the cat, Michele Bartoli. Well, I don't think he's going to pounce to victory today because he's a long way behind his teammate. Around about four and a half minutes at the last time check for him all he's thinking about right now is getting to the Thomas top of this monumental climb well he's still riding in second place and it is still in double figures back to the main peloton the time checks we get are on Bartoli and he is uh, holding it in no man's land as we disappear between the banks of snow there and it looks now as though Zumsteg is also falling back into the field as well there's his overall position 41 minutes down it was a brave attack, this, though, and uh, this is uh, first George uh, Totschnik who's coming forward and setting the pace. And just think this is Gartelli we've gone back to, is it, as we go under the banner? No. Michele Barton yes. almost five and a half minutes behind his own team leader as we now look here at Totschnik. Totschnik going out on the attack. He's high in the rankings, 10th, one minute 52 behind, so they'll have to react to a move like this. But again, every day the Tour of Switzerland, Phil, is treating us to incredibly beautiful backdrops. The Devil, once again, trying to get in on the actions, trying to make sure that he's also fit for the upcoming Tour de France. We didn't see an awful lot of him during the Giro d'Italia. Maybe his form wasn't quite so good. Oh, maybe you're right. Well, Tyler Hamilton here setting the pace. Lance Armstrong on second wheel now. Simone, Belly, Beltran. Uh, the Cofferdis boys are there, Garate, etc. This is a very good little breakaway, and again, it's the same names now. It's becoming showdown time once more. And Lance relying heavily on Tyler Hamilton here to keep the pace at the front for as long as he can to try and give Lance an easier ride, if that's the word, on this big climb because he was in trouble yesterday. You can see now why Armstrong during the winter months has strengthened the team with climbers. There are two very good climbers on US Postal Service who are not here right now, Roberto Jerez and Jose Luis Rubiera. At the moment, he only has one teammate with him, Tyler Hamilton. What he wants to have in a situation like this at the Tour de France is two or three climbers available. And I think that is going to be quite obvious. Those two riders, in fact, preparing for the Tour de France in Spain right now. And you know, the US Postal Service, Phil, at the Tour de France is going to be a very strong team when it comes to the mountains. Well, that's what we all hope. That's what all America hopes indeed. And the way Lance is riding at the moment, it looks as though he's ready. 
Uh, but who his rivals will be, that is still very, very unclear. Ulrich has not showed us yet that he is going to be the number two to Lance in the challenge stakes. 47 kilometers to go now, it's 5.59 to Bartoli, 12.35 to Tochnig, slightly further back to the main field. We'll do a bolts in there as well, just catching a glimpse of number 63. Almost 35 years of age, Udo Boltz, and a man that uh, throughout the, the last few Tour de France's Jan Ulrich has always been able to count upon. He's always ridden very well in the big stage races, and this man, I sometimes wonder where he gets his strength and courage from, because he seems to really dig deep when it comes to looking after his team leaders. And looking after team leaders, as indeed at the back there, number 85, Stefan Jagard of Norway, also in that group. Very impressive bike rider. We hadn't heard very much about him until the Tour de France last year, but he certainly has come on in leaps and bounds, and he's a man that now Lance Armstrong can certainly count on. US Postal are going to have a very hard time picking their final riders for the Tour de France this year because they've got 10 riders at the moment for, for the nine spots. Well, no, they've got 10 riders for the eight spots because obviously Lance is going to be the number one man. So it'll be a difficult time, I think, for Johan Brunil picking those final eight of the men who are going to accompany Armstrong on his journey around France in July. Now, here's the man that broke on the climb and went past the Zumsteg first, George Kochnik of Austria, having a little bit of a, a renaissance this year and riding very, very well. Just in the lenses there is Tyler Hamilton, driving on and keeping the pace high for as long as possible. This is Tochnik, the Gerolsteiner rider. Looking pretty sharp as well, and he's racing now for a high finish because that's what it would be if he gets away from the field. Forget Gartzelli and Bartoli, as the field have at the moment. As we come up to 250 metres, uh, Tochnik is going to claim third slot at the top of the climb. The other two are well over now. It's uh, just on six minutes was the lead of Gartzelli over Bartoli. And as we head up there now, the clock is approaching 12 minutes uh, back to Tochnik from Gartzelli. And it's all downhill now, at least that's what they say in the, in the profile write-ups, to the finish. And so Garzelli has got a real chance of victory. It's going to be a very long, fast and cold descent. And in fact, a lot of the teams sending riders of mechanics and soigneurs to the top of the climb here, Phil, to hand up hot drinks and also rain cakes, because these riders will be going downhill for around about 45 minutes. And the chill factor at altitudes like this is quite unbelievable. You have to be very careful to make sure you don't pick up a cold in a chill. But Tyler Hamilton's not worried about any of that right now because he's just doing the job of work that he needs to do, setting the pace, making at the front. And I'm starting to agree with you now that I do think Armstrong is thinking about overall victory in this bike race. Initially, he came here, I think, just as preparation to ride the time trials hard, test himself on a couple of the mountains. But the way the team is supporting him right now, he thinks he can get the overall lead back when we come to the big mountain time trial. And he wants, I think, to run out the overall victor in this bike race. And if Lance wants to win, I think everyone else is racing for second. Well, you might well be right. Certainly, USP are right in there. Now, Tochnik could spoil all of the fun here because he's gone over the top clear of the field. If he can push home his advantage on this long descent, remember he's starting the day two minutes and a single second behind the race leader, Belly. Then we could see Tochnik in the jersey tonight. But he's going to have to do an excellent descent and keep the pressure on and hope that these boys sit back and take it a bit more easy on the descent. It's a long way now down to the finish in the town of Natas. And this today, by the way, takes us through the, hundred, uh, the thousandth kilometre of the race. A long, fast descent. Not a very technical descent with fairly good corners. These riders will be able to pick up speeds in excess of 90 kilometres an hour. As we get a chance to see, we're almost on the summit of Europe here, looking down over the Alps, a magnificent backdrop. This race is treating us to some of the, the greatest scenery we've seen in the last few years. The, the skies are completely blue, devoid of clouds. This race, I think, has been ideal preparation for Lance Armstrong. In the past, we had mentioned that Jan Ulrich came here as preparation for the Tour de France, and on those occasions, it absolutely poured down with rain for 10 days, something that Ulrich definitely does not appreciate. The fact that this weather has been good, I think, has been great for the riders who are using this as preparation to go forward for the big three-week bike race in July, the Tour de France. Armstrong, once again, in a difficult situation on these mountain slopes, having two teammates up alongside him. So I think we're getting an indication here of how strong US Postal are going to be when we go forward to the Tour. Enjoy the dizzy descent here as the riders keep an eye on each other and carefully plot the way down. There's no 
no reason for heroics right now as it's such a long way to the finish we'll tag on to the back of the peloton and just get the feeling of the descents as they break down for this uh, yet another sharp hairpin bend nicely banked as they whiz around the corner there number 96 is a uh, Nikola Minali uh, sorry is a uh, Sylvester Smid of Poland Minali has already abandoned the race uh, from the Tacconi sport team as we go back up to the Mape leader now Mape not quite the team it was since they split in the winter and Domo Farmfried came on the scene taking a lot of their top riders over to at the Belgian squad as Garzelli now thinking of a stage win here to put his name back on the honours roll of the Tour de Suisse a past winner and the past winner too of last year's Giro d'Italia this year it was a different kettle of fish for him he wasn't well and he called it a day at the midway point a good shot there of his uh, Colnago bicycle very nice colours that the machine has certainly a bike that I think you'd very much appreciate Phil Yes, I wouldn't mind riding one of those, and perhaps one day I'll be lucky enough to do so. Anyway, Stefano Garzelli is in the lead and making that bike work over time at the moment. As we look at the scenery yet again of the Tour de Suisse, Garzelli, I think early on, might have nurtured hopes of snatching the lead, but there's no chance of that now. His 19 minutes overall proving far too big a deficit. But at the minute in time, he has 12 minutes on the field. And he's not looking like a man who's tired because he knows most of the contour today from now on is downhill. Just the odd little kick as we settle down. All he wants to do is survive. He's not thinking about moving up in the overall rankings right now. All he wants to do is get a stage victory over the highest point of this year's Tour of Switzerland. And his teammate further back down the road, Michele Bartoli, is still hanging on to second place on the road with George Tochnik moving up into third spot. A long, lone move by him. But I feel he may well find himself getting pulled back into the fold a little later because we've got the blue guard on the front right now. And in fact, one or two riders joining this group on the descent there because you can see Although Kajagard is setting a very good tempo on the front, Christian van der Velde has made a recovery on the early part of that descent. Moving into third place there is Tyler Hamilton getting a break, and Armstrong is the one wearing the, the hat in fourth position just on the left-hand side. Amazing the way that team is riding. Not a Fasabotolo rider in sight, and uh, so much for their leader, Belly, who's having to handle all of those boys in blue. Uh, with the blue shirts on. Anyway, back with the leader, continuing his very nice descent. Gotzelli is, by the way, a very good descender, and he's making the most of this now to hold a lot of his lead. Well, the way US Postal Phil are riding is we get confirmation with 24 kilometers to go. Bartoli is four and a half minutes behind and almost 11 minutes back to this man, the third man on the road. To finish that thought, the way US Postal are riding, they're riding like the team of the race leader right now, and that is going to be bit of a psychological blow to the other guys who are actually above Armstrong in the standing Simone and Belly they will realize that Armstrong feels very good for the upcoming time trial a time trial where if he rides to his normal performances he could beat those two riders by at least a minute and right now he's only 25 seconds behind the leader in the overall standings well, this is Marcus Seberg and Gerrit Glomzer. they've just gone ahead of the field and are now trying to time trial the way to victory after the descent uh, more the terrain now for Zuberg, and certainly with his sprint, he'd take care of Glomzer if they can hang on to the finish. Well, looking back down at the Armstrong group right now, they're picking up the pace. A lot of work being done by the, the boys in blue right now, the US Postal Service. Armstrong, I think, feeling now much more serious about the fact that he can take out the overall win here because we're going into tomorrow's stage, the uphill time trial, just uh, around about 25 kilometers but it could be the most important 25 kilometers of the stage if he can get the yellow jersey back then he's only really got one day to defend that'll be the stage from Sion to Lausanne because on the last day well normally the way the race finishes it's really a final showdown two more Swiss riders trying to get away and that's the way to get your picture on television ride right up alongside the camera almost knock him off the motorbike the big legs there, bronze as they are, of Marcus Zeberg, the champion of Switzerland. We go back up to George Tochnik now, the Austrian. This time last year, he was winning the Tour of Austria, which used to be one of the famous amateur races till we just became all elite cyclists. And now it is a categorised uh, race in general terms. Uh, but he's moved on to, without doubt, the much bigger event here in the Tour de Suisse, which carries the all-category ranking, which is the highest you can get for the stage race below the three grand tours of Italy, Spain and France. 
Zerberg here, finding himself a little bit of shelter there behind our motorbike. But he's moved back in line now. That's known as a professional foul. It's actually the, uh, the job of the television camera to get themselves out of the way of the race. And if they do get caught up, bike riders very often will take advantage with a slight slipstream and pull from the motorbike camera. But you can see, in fact, Phil, a lot of riders actually recovering. That group is the Armstrong group, and a lot more riders are actually making their way back up to these men on the descent. 13 kilometres to go, 4.20 back to Michele Bartoli, 9.49 back to Tochnik, and the main field... 12 minutes and 10 seconds back so I would say we're looking at the winner of the stage here a man who previously has won the Giro d'Italia he's won the Tour of Switzerland today he wants to take out the queen of stages the one that's been over the highest point of this year's race yes 10 riders moments ago slipped back onto the Armstrong group so it's about 35 riders uh, in that group now a very select group even so but it's a few more willing legs perhaps in the chase down but as you say Garcelli has got the sort of lead surely is not going to come back not the way he's looking like he's riding he's not a tired man hanging on to his lead he's still driving that bike this is Tochnik here he's racing for the yellow jersey and that's much more important for him and the belly will be thankful that the US postal boys are doing all the driving because they might keep him in yellow well, they might give him a yellow for today, but I feel certain he will be a little worried about the time trial coming up tomorrow. This man is making a remarkable descent right now, taking a lot of risks. You see how he hugs over to the left-hand side of the road going into this corner, cuts the apex using as much of the road as possible, trying to make sure that he doesn't lose too much impetus, keeping his pace as high as possible. He will have changed his gearing down a little bit as well going into that corner to the 14 or 15 tooth sprocket just so they could accelerate away but he's not doing anything to pull back this man who is still 4.48 ahead of his teammate Michele Bartoli and still losing nothing at all on the main field who are still over 11 minutes behind. Stefano Godzelli is almost certainly going to win this by a huge margin which for today, Phil, is not going to affect the overall standings. No, he's not going to win by 19 minutes, that's for sure. He'll move up nicely the overall classification though. It may be, may be an eight to nine minute game by the finish. But you see he's riding so well and he has this very high saddle position and a long reach on his bike too. It's almost as if it's an uncomfortable position. It is strange, but very often you'll find this climbers do tend to be a lot more upright, but they don't normally tend to sit quite as high in the saddle as Stefano Garzelli does. He's a great bike rider, but this is a very difficult thing to ask a climber to do, to go out on a long breakaway like this. He was totally set up by his teammate Michele Bartoli with six kilometres to go now. He's not going to be in the saddle for very much more than about nine minutes. When he gets to the finish line, he's going to be exceptionally pleased with this performance. It will put him in good stead with the upcoming Tour de France. It will make his morale a lot better because that would have taken a knock having to withdraw from the Giro d'Italia, which he felt he was going to win for a second year. That withdrawal coming on the morning of the 14th stage when he said enough's enough. So he did the 13 days before, plus the prologue, of course. And uh, that's more than halfway. Anyway, now is another chance for him to impress as he continues to push on towards the end. The road's now much more on his side. The irony is he dropped his teammate Bartley on the long climb. If he was with him now, they could work together and they'd build time, I'm sure, over the field because Bartley is still there in second place and about five minutes ahead of the chasers. Well, he wasn't sure, I think, how but Michele Bartoli was going to handle that big climb so he decided to go on alone at the front of the bike race a big risk he took and he has to come up with a win now and certainly the tactic has proved to be correct because they're going to end up in first and second place but both of those bike riders have had a very hard ride today to hold on to those positions on the road well, we've worked out now that I think there are 38 riders in that chase group so a couple of more have tagged on as well making the daredevil descent to catch up and save time today as the long, long line of riders are even at the back of the race. Look, you are at an incredible distance from the first man. So you're either hanging on or driving, but there isn't much in between. That is a tremendous shot there as we run down the, the end of the winter on the right there as the snows melt and the rivers run away from the mountains down to the valleys below. Little bit of picture breakup, but we're doing our best and we're holding it. Well, this is pretty impressive. Another 
rider from US Postal has moved up to the front here. He must have made a real daredevil descent because I wouldn't have thought that Georgie Hincapie would have got over that climb quite as well as he did, but he has gotten over the climb. He's in the front now with US Postal Service, picking up the tempo at the front of the main field. That's a great move by Hincapie, considering he started the season in excellent form, rode an excellent classic season, taking the win in Gonveville game, taking fourth place in Paris-Roubaix, and finally having a month's rest, coming back to form now in the Tour of Switzerland to be a great asset for Armstrong in July. Big George is a bike rider who simply gets better and better. You think of him just as a sprinter as he was in his early days. Now he's become a real stayer on the classics and now he's becoming a very solid man in stage racing as well, just like Sean Kelly did in fact and indeed Laurent Jalabert is having a wonderful tour. Now, here's how you can race the train. If you've left your wallet on the train, he might catch up because right now, George Toshnik is absolutely flying here. He's doing a very good job here. It's a brave move by him to try and steal a march over the rest of the main field. But the way the US Postal have got themselves organized on the front of the main pack, I reckon he's going to get caught. He will have put an awful lot of effort into this move right now. He attacked just towards the summit of the climb and opened up his gap on the descent. And you can see he's actually keeping pretty close time with the train right now, so he's got his clocks all worked out. But behind, the US Postal are ticking out a very good time. They're pulling back this man slowly but surely, and I reckon before they do get to the finish line, as we go past their banner indicating 10 k to go, they'll have him caught. In fact, he's past the train. That's amazing. The train's slowing down there to take a look at the bike race because you saw the windows open, all the people there watching the tour go by. Gave you some idea just how quick these riders are charging down towards the finish in Natur and being driven on by the boys in blue. They are making inroads into the leaders, but despite the effort here, they are not making great inroads into the leadership of Garzelli nor the chase of Bartoli. But of course, the man they want back in the pack is indeed that man we've just seen, George Totsnik. But look at that, that's remarkable. US Postal, all of the riders at the front. The Spitzer Group in German means the leading group, Stefano Garzelli, the Italian flag indicating that he's an Italian riding for the Mappe squad. His gap over four minutes over his teammate Michele Bartoli, but for him it's almost over right now. And looking up behind, that's where he's come from. The high spot of the Tour of Switzerland this year, a remarkable climb by him and followed by a very good descent. The times are hardly changing at all. And in fact, Totschnig, is losing time on the main field. He's one and a half minutes in front of them, and they are absolutely flying along with almost the full complement of US postal riders on the front of the main field. Armstrong today, Phil, has rallied his men. He's told them, the time trial is coming up. I'm 25 seconds down. I've got a very good chance of taking out this overall win. There's no doubt he's confident. He's come through the mountains in a strike position here with the time trial to come. A time trial Armstrong wants to give him his full shots at because he believes it's similar to the one in the Tour de France. And he's ridden that time trial course a couple of times already in the Tour de France, ready for the upcoming race itself. Now back to the rear side view here of George Totsnik, the Gerolsteiner rider, who seems to have found some of his old form. We've seen him race when he was a top amateur for the Austrians. Uh, he was a very, very good amateur rider indeed. Look at the speed of the main field winding their way down this valley road right now. They're approaching 50 kilometers an hour with a lot of blue jerseys on the front from US Postal. The speed and the pressure certainly is on. They actually only want to catch one man in this bike race, and as you've said, it is George Tochnik. They don't care about Stefano Godzelli. He's too far down to worry about, or Michele Bartoli. Bartoli's almost half an hour behind in the overall standing, so he really is much, much more out of the picture than Godzelli is. Armstrong wants to pull the man in front back in third position on the road, Tochnik, and then just have a good crack against Belly and Simone in the uphill time trial tomorrow. The amazing thing is he's lying in third place in the overall standings and he's hardly really had to make much of an effort to stay there, which is a very sensible tactical ride. He's ridden perfectly so far. All he has to do tomorrow is come up with a good time trial performance. Yes, but the reason he wants this man back is, A, he is a former national hill climb champion of Austria and B, the former national time trial champion of Austria. He's got all the firepower for the time trial tomorrow. A time gain today would put him in a real good place for the victory overall. And I think he's worked that out without any help from us. And that's why he's going now for the big game. 
He's riding well, you can see he's not weakening at all, but the only thing that will work against him is the fact there are seven men on the front of the main field, all wearing the jersey of the US Postal Service team. They will pick the pressure up, and look at that. We're looking now at two kilometers to go for the leader. Here, we are in fact still looking at a gap of almost two minutes between this man, Tochnik, and the main field. So Phil, he's actually extended his margin just a little bit more. The man is riding a brilliant solo effort. There's no time gap there to Bartoli. He's still up there in front of Tochnik, by the way, but eight minutes back to the field. So they are closing, but agonizingly slowly, which says a lot for Garzelli. He's recovered from his sickness of the Giro d'Italia, that's for sure as he comes into the streets now of Natters, and this is where the race will finish. And he's going to get a victory here, which will be well-earned, well-taken, and on the most difficult stage of the Tour de Suisse. So for him, he'll feel pretty good about that. But this is the race behind, and the attacks are coming again. They are, in fact, closing in on Tochnik. I don't know if he knows it. There's a few more riders coming to the front. This looks like Oscar Kamenzin, who's come forward right now to pick up the pace. He's thinking very much about defending the position of Gilberto Simone, but Stefano Garzelli now picking his way through the streets of this very picturesque little town of Natas. He's not too far away, but this is a tricky little entrance to the finishing straight once you've been off the front for such a long time. There's the flamme rouge, the kite indicating 1K to go, and there's going to be no problem for this man, Stefano Garzelli. He can absolutely enjoy and savour the last 1,000 metres of today's stage. This is the feeling that uh, every bike rider wants to savour, the pain of the day resulting in big time gains, which allows you a lot of time to enjoy the big entry into the town for the great finish. And Stefano Garzelli can enjoy all of that now, although somebody took the crowd away from this section of the course, uh, as we leave the town briefly to circumnavigate back into the finishing line. But Stefano Garzelli, a sad story for him, he might lose our picture if we go in that tunnel. No, we didn't, we're waiting for him to come out of it. And when he does, he'll be 500 metres to go. Here he comes, Stefano Garzelli, about to take his stage victory in the Tour de Suisse. Well, 28 years of age, he's had one win so far this year, that was a stage of the Tour of the Pay Basque. But this is going to be a sweet one for him because he's climbed over the high mountain of today's stage and proved that he is back and he will be a challenger when it comes to the Tour de France. He is a great bike rider, confirming that this is the way that he managed to get victory in the Giro d'Italia last year. Into the final straight, there's no need to look back at all because you won't see anyone for an awful long time. When he finishes, there'll be fewer than 400 kilometres to go in this year's Tour de Suisse, but perhaps the most important kilometres of them all will be tomorrow now, the 25 and a half kilometre time trial. And it's a mountain individual time trial as well. But here we are, Garzelli gets the honour on the day. Clock starts now. A very good, look at the average speed, Paul, 39 kilometres an hour for that stage. Absolutely remarkable, that is very fast, but let's not forget on the descent of the big climb, the Newfoundland Pass, he will have been doing almost 70 kilometres an hour. Tochnik is still holding out for third place out on the road at the moment, that's a huge chain ring he's got on there, and in fact, looking at the size of that, I think he may well have put a 54-tooth chain ring on for today, so obviously he was planning something rather special. There's the main field with Lance Armstrong and most of his US postal service teammates in there right now they're going along pretty fast i would say they're doing around about two or three kilometers an hour faster than tochnik but the last time check we had they weren't actually eating into his advantage at all quick head count there i got 38 riders in that bunch as they're chasing down towards the end they've still got to bring back at least try and control the escape of george tochnik and the boys from US Postal are driving on as if they had the leader on the team. And the Lamprey team riders here are saying thanks a lot, guys. And I'm sure so too is Vladimir Obelli. Well, US Postal are going to be very happy with this because not only George Hincap has moved himself back up to this leading group of 30 riders, but also in there as well is Matty White. He must have done a stomping ride over the climb there. Yatislav Ekimov has also recovered over the top of that climb. So the, the team is all on fire at the moment leading up to the Tour de France and riding like a team possessed now, trying to pull themselves back to that one man there in the white jersey of Gerald Steiner. Ooh. And the fact that we're pulling back means that they've got him in their sights. They can see him approximately 20, 25 seconds, no more than that. They've got him under control. We feel a bit sorry for George, really, because that was a super move as he came up towards the top of the Newfoundland Pass, and he survived for an awful long way down, and at one stage, very close to taking the race lead. Back to the finish, the man we'd almost forgotten about, Michele Bartoli, has done an exceptional ride here as well, because dropped by his teammate early on on the climb, 
Really, he was destined to go back into the field. He never did. He's hung on for second place. That's pretty impressive because from the top of the final climb of the day, there's been absolutely no change in time between these two riders, Stefano Garzelli and Michele Bartoli. Bartoli is a magnificent bike rider. You have to appreciate the way he rides. He's always aggressive, always looking to go out on the attack. And for him, it's a 1-2 for Mappé. 4.22 behind his teammate. A long, difficult ride for second place. Oh, but well done for Michele Bartoli. We're in the streets too for the finish here. And this is still... Is this Tochnik? Yes, it's still Tochnik in third place. I thought for a moment we'd had a switch. But no, he's still there as he comes under the kilometre kite now. Well, at least he's going to get third place as the chase continues to hunt him down. He's really digging deep now. He's going to take a few risks through these final corners. At the last time check, he was just 20 seconds ahead of the main field, so they really are boring down upon him. Keep your fingers crossed. Maybe he can hold on for third place, but there's a long line of blue chasing him down. That's the US Postal Service team. Over the railway tracks, hard left now as they hunt round with that sharp right-hand bend as they approach the finish. And there he is, just going around the corner and the sprinters are looking for him. And I'm sure the tails are up, even though they're almost on the line. They're flying. They're absolutely hammering along here since the top of the final climb. We've seen a lot of work done by US Postal. Oh. They're just clawing back to him. They're digging so deep. This man is doing an incredible job to hold on. When he goes through that tunnel, he's going to have 500 metres to go to the finishing line. He's ridden a long way on his load and it's all going to disappear within sight of the finish 300 meters to go the sprinters are starting to wind it up pro bike riders well what can you say they're not even going to let him get this third place because that's thomas konechny who's all over the road and george hinkapi is absolutely flying after konechny they've swept todchnig up he'll get the same time as the group that will be no consolation konechny pips hinkapi on the line so it will be Thomas Konechny gets third, Hinkapi fourth, and little Paolo Bettini there crossing in fifth place. Well, you have to feel sorry there for poor old George Tochnik, but there's the stage result. Garzelli, 4.23 ahead of teammate Bartoli, 7.28 in the end ahead of the field, led home by Thomas Konechny, George Hinkapi. All of these riders finishing that league group, and in fact right down to 41st place, all getting the same time. A tough day in the saddle, though, but what a chase back by the boys from US Postal. And they caught him, and you can't catch them closer to the line than that. Well, Armstrong doing a good ride, too, in the main field. Belly also. But this is the day for Stefano Garzelli, the highest spot of the Tour of Switzerland, and the win that he's been looking for, his second win of the season so far. A good motivational move going forward to the Tour next week. Well, it looks as though he's thinking what might have been if his form had been better early on there, doesn't it? But here's the overall, no change at all at the moment. Simone still looking for that one second over Belly now, for three days the leader of the Tour. Further down, all of these riders now having to turn their minds to the big time trial. 25 and a half kilometres of it now, and he's got a nasty climb on it. And they've all got to pull their best ride out now, because that surely will decide the order of the finish in Lausanne. But three days away from the finish now. It's not flat by any means until we get down to Lausanne. Uh, but for Vladimir Obelli, well, I think he must be thinking his time is up. Stop, forget, Phil. He's a very good time trialist, but it's going to be a huge challenge. And the big day is going to come very shortly. Stage 8, Sion to Crans Montana, 25.1 kilometres, and that is all uphill. This is the stage that Lance Armstrong has been waiting for, and those little zigzags at the end going up through the village of Montana before finally finishing in the ski resort of Crans Montana. Yes, home of World Cup skiing, today home of the arrival of the Tour de Suisse. It begins at Sion at 509 uh, metres above sea level, then the climb starts at Grange, and it's up, 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 all the way to 1498 metres meters and let's start with Lance Armstrong Three, two, one, go. they even told him in English how to uh, make the start and off he goes now from the town of Sion he's on his way but ahead of him here is Stefano Garzelli will stay with him because he was the hero of uh, 24 hours ago the time to beat is Steve Zampieri and Zampieri used to be on the Mercury team he's not this year as he comes home he's replaced Zampieri on top of the leaderboard Garzelli in with a time seven seconds quicker. Very good ride by Stefano Garzelli. Obviously recovered perfectly from his ride yesterday as we join here Tyler Hamilton. Now, Tyler Hamilton's time isn't always interesting to watch because it gives you an indication of what Lance Armstrong can do. Nearly always Armstrong is going to beat Hamilton at the first time check after nine kilometres. Hamilton goes through with the best time so far. 
And looking as though he's uh, fighting his bike all of the way there, the last man to start, the Mayo Jean of the Tour de Suisse, Vladimiro Belli, has made his departure now. It's all down to him whether he can match the times of the other riders ahead. And Tyler Hamilton continues on at a pace here as he catches the riders starting in front of him. That's pretty impressive. He's going out here as fast as possible. This is usually the order of the day for Tyler Hamilton. Go out as fast as you can over the first 10 kilometers and set out the times for Lance Armstrong. This man is not doing a good ride, Alex Zuller, but look at this coming up right behind him, catching another man who started in front of him. Hamilton is absolutely burning up the road at the moment. He's put in the fastest time at nine kilometers and he's about to catch Zuller. Zuller, previously a great rider against the clock, but today totally spent look at Hamilton's face right now he has been steadily obliterating as Ampieri's times at every check Tyler Hamilton is doing it again now as he comes up towards the line well that's a bit of a surprise for Alex Zula but don't worry about it for Tyler Hamilton because this is going to be best time by quite a way on Gartelli another fine time trial performance by Tyler Hamilton and he digs deep all the way to the line now as he makes his way, a little bit of a left-hand turn, now a sprint. There's the time of Stefano Gartelli, 49.58. He's got the time in hand. Here's the arrival of Alex Zula. I hope it doesn't mess our clock up, but it may not. As Zula comes in, he's almost caught by Tyler Hamilton. Who would have thought that? Top of the top for him now by a minute and 13 seconds, 48.45. That's an impressive bike ride for Tyler Hamilton, but more impressive, he set the precedent for Lance Armstrong. Armstrong now, Phil, looking very comfortable, drinking, keeping an eye on his look at that nine kilometers covered best time 10 minutes and 10 seconds that's almost 45 seconds faster than Hamilton so far he's absolutely ticking away at this speed special time trial bike for him today not the normal low profile machine we're used to but this machine is specially designed for the uphill time trial Daniel Artienza out on the course he too is putting in a pretty good ride so far as indeed he has done throughout this tour. He's going through at second best time here, 31.20. And look at this now, uh, Lance Armstrong, that cadence uh, of twiddling his pedals, spinning I think is the term we use now, as he just continues to plough on here and not worry a thing about it. This looks like Beltran, is it, he's catching? Yeah, he's catching and passing Beltron. This is the time check at nine kilometers. Fastest Armstrong, 24 seconds ahead of Belly, 31 seconds ahead of Simone. He is very close to moving himself up into the yellow jersey position. Just one more second on Vladimiro Belly, and the man wearing 81 is the new leader of the bike race. So now we know why US Postal have been driving this race like the race leader. Indeed, they could well be by the morning doing it for the race leader. Now the race continues here as we look again at the hero of yesterday, George Tochnik, but he is in a little bit of trouble. Well, at the second time check at 14 kilometres covered, he's actually in second place at the moment, but this man has still to arrive. 81, Lance Armstrong. Unbelievable, the, the pedalling action of this man, how it's changed over the last few years as we look now at Tochnik. Tochnik now catching and passing Inigo Cuesta. A great bike ride by him. Oh, what a pity that he got caught so close to the line yesterday because he would have found himself climbing up into the top five in the overall standings. But he too has recovered overnight to put in a sterling performance in this very difficult time trial. Atienza coming up to the line. It's going to be a new best time for Atienza. What a remarkable ride by this Spaniard. 49.36, in fact, just going outside the time there. What a remarkable ride over the last few metres. Well, here comes Alexander Vinukrov now also having a great tour, the winner of the Tour of Germany, challenging the time for third place to Daniel Atienza at this point, at 20 kilometres, and how close is he going to run him? Because he's already gone a little bit slower there than Atienza, and he's now chasing the time of Gartzelli, that's where he'll drop in. So he's now fourth, so again, the man from Kazakhstan doing OK. George Tochnik then trying to continue his progress here for a high-flying finish in the Tour de Suisse, he made a big effort yesterday, he must have used energy up yesterday, but it was a gamble and it only just failed to work out. Looks like he's very much recovered from that effort. Now Beat Zaberg also putting in a high performance. Fifth at the moment after 20 kilometers covered. And coming up to the line, Tochnik is not going to be the fastest man on the day. It's going to be on the line, I think, second place for him. A good ride though, 48.51, but only 30 kilometers an hour. Yes, well, that was the same average speed as Tyler, but obviously a bit slower because he dropped in behind Tyler Hamilton. Here's the man of the moment, Lance Armstrong. He rode up the climb this morning halfway, by the way, then he jumped in his team car and finished it off. 
He's also seen the course yesterday, so he knew exactly what was coming at him. And my goodness me, he's so thorough in his preparation. And right now, he is thorough in the time checks as well. He's chasing Tyler's best time here. He's going to eat it up alive as he goes under the banner. Armstrong quickest now as he goes through in 36 minutes. He's on not just the win in the time trial, he's on the race for yellow as well. Well, it's looking like it can be complete obliteration. That's 125 faster than Tyler Hamilton. Don't forget, behind him on the road is Vladimiro Belli, the wearer of the yellow jersey, but also in second place at the start this morning, Gilberto Simone. But this is absolutely magnificent. The revolutions are right up there at 100 RPM at the moment. He's out of the saddle. You very rarely see him do that in a time trial. Second place for Simone behind Armstrong. But ahead of Tyler Hamilton, so Gilberto Simone also is riding extremely well. He spit the US Postal team at that point. At 50, 50 metres from the finish, rather, is the rival of Blanche Jalabert, and he's dropping in in sixth place, uh, 125 behind the leader in the board, and that'll be Hamilton. Armstrong still out on course, and I think next time we get a chime check, we could see that this man is the new leader of the Tour of Switzerland. At the time check, after just nine kilometres covered, he was 24 seconds ahead of the man who started the race in first place, as Alexander Vinokurov has also put in a sterling ride over the last few kilometres. His is going to be third best time in 49.22. He has a terrific form now. He's wearing the points leader's jersey there, by the way, as he comes in, but that is a fabulous result for Vinokurov, and here comes Biatzeberg, another inspired Swiss rider into sixth place, but Lance Armstrong approaching the finish now. There is the time to beat of Tyler Hamilton. I think he's going to eat that one alive. Armstrong with still a couple of riders to finish behind him, remember, is racing up to the line for best time. All the time checks indicating it will be the winning time as he hits the line now. Armstrong, 47-18, almost 90 seconds off his teammate Hamilton. That will do nicely because Belly here, according to the checks on the road and according to the way we look at him now, is losing his yellow jersey. He doesn't look very good, does he? He looks absolutely nailed right now. He's had the pressure of the yellow jersey on his shoulders for three days and he has hasn't got the cadence of Lance Armstrong. He's right on the front of the saddle. The only man that could rival him is here, Gilberto Simone, but at the time checks, he too is not anywhere near as close as Armstrong was to Tyler Hamilton. This is a good ride by Simone, but you know, it's not going to be good enough. At the last time check, Phil, he was almost a minute behind Armstrong, and we're nowhere near the finish just yet. The best Simone can hope, I feel certain, is a rise to second overall. He should get over the top of his uh, rival from Italy, Belli, as he just raises a sprint here. There, he's already outside the time of Armstrong as he's got this left-hander to come and race up to the line, but Gilberto Simone again has shown us he is carrying the form of the Giro d'Italia over to the Tour de Suisse. As Simone races to the line, it'll be a good result. He should slot in in second place with a bit of a sprint. Yes, he does. 48-44, a minute 25, though, behind Armstrong. That's incredible. Well, let's not forget, he's the winner of the recent Giro d'Italia. He was all dominating in the mountains there, and this is a mountain time trial. Out on the road, though, Vladimiro Belli has failed over the last few kilometres to stay near the leaders. He currently is racing to try and come across the line in fourth place, and he might just do that as he comes up to the line 49-17, almost two minutes behind Armstrong and in fifth place in the end, but even so, that's a good performance and you're often inspired when you pull on the leader's jersey. There is the result of the stage, a second stage win now and another time trial for Lance Armstrong. A minute 25 over Simone, a minute 26 over teammate Hamilton, a minute 33 over Tochnik. Well, Armstrong, you're a specialist of the time trial. <laughs> Yeah, it's really, uh, it's different, you know, we never, we never do really any uphill time trials. The last, the last one I did was two years ago in the Dauphiné Libre, and, uh, and I think the, the, one, the only one before that was here in the Tour of Switzerland in, in 1995, so it's a rare discipline, but it's really uh, the main reason I came here this year, was to practice for this day, and to practice for the uphill time trial in the Tour de France. We've seen you controlling the race with your teammates. And did you know you were going to be so strong? Oh, we looked uh, yesterday after the finish. Also, we drove uh, from uh, from the finish to to Sion and and, and and drove the course. So through the night, uh, I had it in my mind. And then uh, this morning, rode half the climb on the bike and drove the rest. So no, I mean you never know it perfectly when you've only seen it two times. But. Uh, 
Uh, for example, Chamroux in the Tour de France, I've seen six or seven times now, ridden six or seven times, so it makes a big difference. You're on excellent form. Is it not a little bit too soon before the Tour? Oh, you know, I, I actually, I haven't felt that great here at the Tour de Suisse up until uh, really today, but <clears throat> I don't know. I, uh, I would say my form is, is, is right on time. It's, uh, and I would rather it be where it is now than be late. And uh, uh, I would be uncomfortable if I was late. What's going to happen over the next two days? Uh, it's, it's, the, it's still a bike race. Anything can happen. And the good news is that uh, we have the jersey, I think. And the, the even better news is that we have a great team. So uh, you saw the team yesterday on, on the Newfoundland Pass. It was a, we have a super, a super team and a motivated team. So... Uh, that's the way you keep a jersey and that's the way you win bike races. Merci et félicitations. Thank you and congratulations to Lance Armstrong. Yes, indeed, he thoroughly researched the course and he has won the stage and he has taken the overall lead. He is right on schedule now for the upcoming Tour de France. A minute and one seconds lead now for Lance Armstrong over Simone and Belly drops back to third place, 1.33. Biatzeberg riding high in fourth place, Vanukarov there in fifth. And now with two days to go and the last weekend to come, Lance Armstrong's team really can try and control this race now with the leader on their squad, rather than chasing down all of the other attacks for somebody else. So as we go up to the final stage, which will stake us away now from Sion, we've come back down the mountain of Kranz Montana to the start of the ninth stage, 166.8 kilometers, that will take the riders now down to Lausanne. And once on the lake at Lausanne, the final day will be spent on a big loop around the area down there. There's still some climbs, the Col des Moss, well known in international cycling circles, is a second category climb onto Buell, down to Veve, and then along the coast to Lausanne, a very similar finish to the one they used in the Tour de France last year. There's the start of 472 kilometers up the climb of the Col des Moss. And that takes us up to 1445. Then it's all downhill. It won't be for Lance Armstrong, I don't think, Paul. Well, a bit uh, of a problem out on the course because, in fact, uh, the, the Swiss railways have blocked the route out here. And this young man was out on a breakaway at the time. And that uh, is not too good. This is Bert Bragrabsch of the Fonac team. And there is the Swiss Railways, spot on time. Now, Bert Grabsch has been away for quite a while. He's built a big lead here on this penultimate stage. And uh, unfortunately for him, once the barrier come down, he was stopped. Now, international rules make it quite clear. Had he gone through, of course, the peloton would have lost ground. But because it fell in front of him, then he simply had to stop and he's lost time. That's a shame. But the main field not really leaving him too far off the front at the moment because a big pressure on the front of that main group and that's coming really today from the teams of the sprinters who feel they've got a great chance of getting the victory. Lance Armstrong took that win yesterday and the overall lead but today his US Postal Service team, Phil, are getting a hand from some of the other teams in the race with other interests. Well, Grab's going away very early on today with Rolf Husser from Team Coast, another Swiss rider, by the way. They really are inspired in their own tour, but he got rid of Rolf and he's tried to go on alone. At one stage, his gap, the gap was just on 10 minutes. It's coming down now at a rapid rate of knots because the chase is on. And even though we had that climb, the Col de Moss in the middle, did nothing to the race. Here they all come, heading down towards Lausanne through the vineyards and hoping for a sprint finish. Look at the length of that peloton. Well, the main field really hammering here. Touching speeds again, approaching 80 kilometers an hour as they wind down through this vineyard area just on the outside of Lake Lausanne. These riders will then go along the lakeside, totally flat, the last 30 kilometers of this bike race, and it's going to be exceptionally fast. As you can see, everybody clambering to get to the front to try and pick up the pace. Domo Farm Fritz putting riders up at the front. That's Piotr Wodecki on the front there in the white and red jersey. He is the champion of Poland. 1.39 is the advantage of this man with 17 kilometers to go, and it's coming down oh so quickly for him. Well, look at his style. It looks like a very tired man out there right now. Demoralized a little bit by the closed level crossing, which cost him time, around about a minute, I believe, as the race now believes that they will have a sprint on the hand. 
This is the area where Eric Decker pulled off that lovely win in the Tour de France last year, wasn't it? It certainly was a greatly timed sprint by him, but they won't be going up that very difficult climb where he launched his attack. This is the lone leader. I caught a quick glimpse there of Robbie McEwen moving forward there. His team obviously feeling today that he's got a chance of getting up to the front in that sprint. If he could get a stage win here over the last couple of days of the Tour of Switzerland, Phil, that would certainly earn him a place in the Domo Farm Freaks team at the Tour de France. But this man wearing 41, Johan Musel, apparently is now seriously thinking at 37 years of age of riding the Tour this year, and that would be great. It'll be by way of uh, his farewell to the Belgian people, perhaps, because next year he's hinted he might retire from the sport by riding one last Paris-Roubaix, similar to what Franco Ballerini did this time around. The race being driven on. This man is hanging on, but I think it's almost over. Last time check, we saw there 58 seconds. I think it's uh, almost curtains for him now. In fact, I think that's him. Well, it is him. In fact, the curtains have been drawn completely closed because there he is sitting up now, looking over his shoulder. He knows that the long, lone effort is not going to pay today. And a lot of riders moving to the front. You can see, in fact, CSC Online have got a few riders up there and there's obviously one or two pink jerseys of Team Telecom moving forward as well. They're thinking about Eric Zabel. There is Art Zabel in about seventh position right now, sitting on the wheel of Gian Matteo Fanini. Fanini, as always, wearing those black overshoes. I think that's much more of a a psychological thing for Fanini. He's the man who goes to the line last before he peels off, leaving Eric Zabel in an ideal position to try and take out victory. Ten kilometres to go. No big lead out right now. They'll wait until maybe four or five kilometres to go, but I must feel certain that Telecom have got a lot of confidence today in Zabel. Yes, you know, there's a rumour started that, in fact, Zabel very upset because he's heard the team are not going to put Jean Matteo Fanini in the team for the Tour de France because they're building it round Ulrich. And as a lead-out man for Zabel, who's going for a sixth uh, green points jersey, I'm not surprised he's upset. Anyway, today he's going for just another stage win, and this time in the Tour de Suisse. But he's got to beat, I think, men like Robbie McEwen today. McEwen's getting a little bit desperate. Well, that is really a bad decision, I think, if they do lead it out. And apparently there is going to be a meeting after the Tour of Switzerland between Telecom, Ulrich and Zabel. And what is one man? Zabel, I think, has got more reliability than Ulrich when it comes down to winning bike races. And certainly I would have put in Fanini just to keep Zabel happy. Today, though, that is in the back of everybody's minds. The white jersey at the front with a band across it in fact is Rolf Aldag a kilometre to go right now but there's a few men trying to get up there in with the move there is Robbie McEwen right up there trying to get the wheel of Eric Zabel Zabel now up into fifth place in the pink jersey on the wheel of Fanini you can see the black overshoes there he's bumping his shoulders there, keeping his position well lined up there, wants to leave his man with only two or three hundred metres to go, but everybody is queuing up on the wheel of Eric Zabel, they know he's the number one man on the block this year well, Aldag swung right and has dropped right out of it there. There's a little bit of headbutting going on just behind as the riders coming round. This is looking a perfect lead out here at the moment for Eric Zabel. Fanini in second place is all set to bring them on. This is Vinukarov who's leading out uh, for the team. And now second place, Fanini. A challenge also coming up there from the Lamprey riders. This is going to be a very difficult sprint for Zabel to take now. But here he comes, gritting his teeth, taking on McEwen. McEwen on the barriers. Zabel is having to pick up the wheel of Robbie McEwen as they come through. And that's Sasson, who's also of confidence. But Zabel gets it. McEwen, I think, will get third. He might have been second. But Ruskis was in there as well for Gettle. Steiner. Well, he's done it. Another win for Zabel. He's pulling away, Paul, in the rank of the best winner of the season. But look at this. This is how a team works. You see Robin McEwen try to surprise him there. Fanini's done his job sitting up. A great explosion by McEwen, but right on his wheel there is Zabel. Full gear, the massive gear is in right now. He's picking up the acceleration, waiting for the moment to pounce. This man is so fast once he gets into gear, and you can see just coming up the outside there, Ruskis, the Gerolsteiner rider, almost getting there, but for Zabel today, it's win number 15. That is the, the biggest number of wins of anybody so far this season. Interesting to see there, too, as Zabel wins. His teammate Fanini really freaked out Robbie Hunter there, and Robbie pulled right out of that one and has finished way down. He was in at the kill for a moment. There's the stage result. Zabel ahead of Ruskis. McEwen, Sasson for Cofidis, Glomzer, who was on the break the other day in the mountains, and Jean-Patrick Nazon, the less famous of the brothers, he was on the frame as well. Overall, as you can imagine, a great day for Lance Armstrong. There's no change. Simone Belli, Zaberg, Vinukarov, and Georg Totchnik in sixth place. 
No change at all, one stage to come. In theory, it should be a formality for Lance, but you can never say that in a bike race, and you certainly you wouldn't hear Armstrong say it. Well, you certainly wouldn't, but looking at some of the other names, uh, Juan Manuel Garate riding very well in seventh place in the overall standing. Jalabert really well up there in ninth place as well. So to the last stage, starting and finishing on the lake here in Lausanne, the home of the International Olympic Committee and indeed the world cycling body, the Union Cycliste Internationale, out to Nuillon, then on to La Saraz, off into the hills, Hiver dans les Bains, Tyrène, Moudon, and then we come off the mountains via Mezières, down to the lake and back into the finish. One big loop, a total distance of 175 and 0.9 kilometers. I never know how they measure these courses so accurately as we look at the contour here. And no great shakes. It gets a bit hilly towards the end uh, through the vineyards before the flat visit down the lake. In theory, should be a bunch sprint. Well, we'll find out. There is Juan Antonio Samaranch, uh, the president of the IOC, alongside the president of the UCI, Hein Verbruggen, as they see the riders on the way. Just before the start, in fact, Monsieur Samaranch had a little word with uh, Lance Armstrong and asked how his new house was coming along. Well, I wonder if he's bought another one. He's got one in Spain, one in France, one in uh, Austin, Texas, and I hear he's looking to buy a new one in San Moritz. I think he's going to buy Europe. Well, he's done very well, and why not? He's a great bike rider, and he deserves every penny he gets, as far as I'm concerned. And certainly this week, because he's shown us now he's produced the form that has made him a red-hot favourite for the Tour de France, and I don't think anybody else will be going into the Tour with the number one tag but Lance. Absolutely remarkable. He's ridden superbly here. I think he's ridden a very good tactical race, Phil, because he's kept himself at the front. He hasn't really dug into his resources, and here he is coming out at the end of the Tour of Switzerland in the yellow jersey. He's used his team sensibly as well. At the moment, they're setting the tempo on the front, but they've never really been put into serious pressure to keep this bike race together. It's really been a ride in the park for these guys, and they're bringing all of their men to the finish line in Lausanne intact. And this man, Kajagard, here on the front 85, has been a great revelation, not only last year, but this year in the Tour of Switzerland. Cedric Vasseur, they're going through. There is Van der Velde, Tyler Hamilton, Ekimov, George Hincapie. These are the guys who are going to go forward very shortly to the Tour de France and Lance Armstrong's ability to try and to make it three in a row. But this now is a small group going off the front there. Last year's winner, number one, Oscar Kamenzin. He's not been great so far in this bike race, but he is now trying to get himself into a situation where he can move forward and get at least some glory out of this race. Yes, this is the group indeed which has got away, contains uh, last year's winner, Oscar Kamazind, but apart from that, nobody in the group, well, not even with him, is going to affect the overall leader as they got a clear and they've had a nice lead and no real concern here. It's not going to be a bunch sprint, I don't think, though, because these riders have made the, gate, the break that matters as they continue now to build up. This is Magnon. Nicolas Jalabert was in there as well, and the, uh, the man at the front there in the strange-looking jersey is Dmitry Konishev, one of the older riders of the international peloton these days. He won that huge stage over the saint Gotthard, and now he's in the breakaway once more. And uh, Nicolas Jalabert and uh, Magna are extremely good sprinters as we come down towards the Olympic Park. This is going to be a very tricky sprint because Magna in the white jersey of Francais de Jeu is a pretty rapid man at the end of the day. And just to give you the rest of the riders in the break, uh, as, as in fact, this is Jalabert who's gone in the last kilometre, and that's the way to go. He hasn't got the sprint of his elder brother, hasn't got the victory list either. I was about to give you all the breakaway, but I think we're going to see them chase him down here because the chase is starting. I think it's Konishev starting. Uh, Oscar Kamazin is still there. Magnon and Christian Pousse is the other rider. These five have dictated the race today. Hardly a ripple from the peloton to bring them back, and it was a good move for Oscar Kamazin. Good move there. In fact, it's Konishev who's bringing them back there. Kamen's in up there in third place. On the back in fifth place there is Manya. He's in the ideal position right now. He's a very good sprinter. Jalabert now taking up last position. That was his only chance now as we come up alongside the lake. 500 metres to go on the front. Konishev, he's a good sprinter. This would make two wins if he could get it. Kamenzind is in the best position in second place there. But watch out for the white jerseyed Francais de Jure rider, Magna, a great sprinter. But you know now he's spending much more time on the cyclocross circuit. And Jalabert goes again. Well, I don't know where he's found that one from. He's barely recovered and he's hit them once more here along the lake in Lausanne. Jalabert this time totally committed. Remember, Konishev once got the silver medal in the World Championships at Chambéry when he outsprinted Sean Kelly and finished just behind Greg Lamont. 
on, but now he's been beaten by Oscar Kamazin on the line. So Kamazin, the winner of this race overall last year, has had a great consolation by taking out the final stage. So Kamazin gets the stage win, and now he can take a seat and see who will win the Tour de Suisse. And there's no doubt in our minds. It's going to be Lance Armstrong, absolutely no contest at all. Armstrong comfortably in the main field there. But you can see the pink jerseys on the front. That's Team Telecom trying to set it up once again there for Eric Zabel. Just swinging off on the left-hand side is Rolf Aldag. Robbie McEwen is right up there once again. But it looks as if it's going to be a formality for the man who's been the fastest sprinter so far. Eric Zabel in the points jersey in third position right now, being set up once again finally by Fanini. It's going to be a big discussion when they come to the end of this bike race because Fanini, they can't leave him out, Zabel going around the corner in first. Yes, a lovely lead out again by Fagnini, Zabel makes that a formality, takes sixth place, best of the rest, just about two minutes, 56 seconds behind. Lance Armstrong will not worry about the gain there by Oscar Kamazin because he has won the Tour de Suisse and that is his first time in this event riding in the colours of US Postal. There's though how the stage was almost won by Nicolas Jalabert. Very brave move by him, the second attack of two here. He almost again catches them unawares, but there you can see the, the style and tactics of Dmitry Konishev just bringing himself back up to the wheel. He shouldn't have hesitated. He hesitated a moment there, which just gave Oscar Kamenzin the ability to open up and kick on that huge gear of his. He's right up alongside. Jalabert sits up. The big challenge coming from Magnan, but the win goes to Switzerland and last year's winner, Oscar Kamenzin. So there's the result, Kamenzin, Magna, Pus, Konishev, Jalabert, who seemed to have a problem with his bike in that sprint. He wasn't too happy at all with fifth place. Zabel coming in at 2.56 for the sixth place on the stage. The flag of Switzerland flies proudly over a superbly organised race, but it's the Stars and Stripes who take it. Lance Armstrong by a minute and two seconds, the first American to win this since Andy Hampson did the double in 1986 and 1987. The only two Americans to triumph in this event. Well done, Lance Armstrong. You've won the Tour of Switzerland. Was it difficult Difficult with uh, Cameron's in and those guys off the front? Ah, it's uh, we had to, we couldn't go easy, you know. I mean, it was it was uh, close enough that we had to ride. Uh, that not me, but the team had to ride fairly hard. So, but we never panicked, and uh, the team's strong. We have eight strong guys. Mais vous avez dû supporter avec But you had to uh, hold the weight of the race on your shoulders. No, the team was is a well balanced team. You have guys for the for the flats. You have guys for the for the climbs, time trials. And you saw from the very beginning, even the prologue, three riders in the first four, and then uh, and then strong for the ten days. So it's a great team. Did you think ten days ago that um, you could win this Tour de Suisse? No, I thought I had possibilities, but I didn't know if uh, how much effort it would take because it's. I think uh, the big objective is the Tour de France. If we came here and and killed ourselves to win uh, a 10-day race, then wouldn't be wise. But we were able to hide out, so to speak, for a little bit and then uh, and win at the end. You're a, you're a great bike rider. You've won the World Championships. You've won the Tour de France a couple of times. How do you rate the Tour of Swiss? <laughs> it's a big race. It's, uh, I mean, everybody here wants to talk about the Tour de France in 10 days' time, and everybody wants to talk about a rivalry with another rider, but... The Tour of Switzerland is a big race, and it's, a, it's an honor to be here, an honor to win. And, uh, you know, I, I'll remember it for a long time. What are you going to do for the next few days? Training. Okay. <laughs> Bonne chance. Thanks. Yes, indeed. I think uh, Jan Ulrich was the man that alluded to there by Lance Armstrong as the man he'll come up against in the Tour de France. But right now it's time to enjoy victory in the Tour de Suisse. Only the second American to do that. On the right there, Vladimir Obelli, who was in this race on the podium last year as well. And Gilberto Simoni continuing his great form, which he found by winning the Giro d'Italia. Well, I hope you've enjoyed the Tour de Suisse. This was a great race indeed. It all's well now for an excellent Tour de France. On behalf of Paul Sherwin and World Cycling Productions, I'm Phil Liggett saying, until the Tour, goodbye.